All right. Hello. Welcome to Adventures and Lolly Gaggin. We are back to playing Call of Cthulhu tonight. We're continuing our Eternal Lies campaign. Uh, and for those of you who uh, I've got a couple of people asking me, Eternal Lies, where's that coming from? It's a Trail of Cthulhu campaign, uh, but we are converting it over into Call of Cthulhu as, as we play. Uh, but uh, but it's a really, really awesome read. If you haven't actually looked at it yet, you should. Uh, Pelgrane Press. It's a it's it's really amazing, actually. And it's super well organized uh, and it's very easy to run. And uh, let me look at the PDF. What does it say? OK, I'm going to kill everybody. It says it says for this encounter, kill everybody. That's all it says. Uh, and so we go. Wait, 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 wait. Are it you does. Sure? It, it says it right here. It's very, I just said it was very well organized. Are you <laughs> right there? It's like, you guys, we took too long at starting this campaign. So we're going to start fresh. Brand new characters. Yep. Uh, forget you guys were just telling are. me I had to run ball season. So uh, I got to kill you guys <laughs> so we can get over to that really fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness uh or heck boy you can run heck boy too uh, either of those makes steven really happy you know i'm not much one. yeah i know you are i know you're i might run it on fridays though after delta green oh the face <laughs> okay i thought you were gonna say the fridays okay <laughs> i can stay around for a bit <laughs> oh, yeah face. hey Aaron. Aaron tried to tp cast last night and it was damn close uh in warhammer 40k i won't spoil it at all but it was really really close uh some someone someone is a little you bit could argue than they were you can argue that someone died and a new better version of that person yeah will now be reborn definitely uh so but go check out the Justin. warhammer 40k it was a lot of fun no, no, he's still around. He's not going to get any better. I've been waiting 20 years for him to get better. He just won't. He just won't. It, Anyhow. It's like the ship of Theseus paradox, but with Sister Celeste. Like, mm -hmm. how many parts can you replace before she's no longer Celeste? As far as Brother Talos concerned, you can't replace enough. Because uh, each time... the brain, right? Eh, I guess. I mean, you can put a cogitator in there. Everything's fine. <laughs> 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 anyhow uh no one however in this game is going to turn into some kind of weird uh cyborg though that would be fun but i don't know 1936 cyborg maybe maybe we'll see we'll see how it goes there's weird science and call it could be the universe so yeah. maybe we'll see yeah uh i don't think that's going to save any of you tonight so uh we're going to uh we're going to start with some some introductions uh people are going to tell us who they're playing and then we're going to get in uh because we ended on one hell of a note and one way or the other, I think we're in Los Angeles today. Uh, so uh, we're going to start with probably the person who's most likely to die. Uh, we got Pastor Wood. Go ahead there, Steven. Tell us about Pastor. Well, howdy, y'all. Uh, I suppose if I could just turn this introduction into a two-hour introduction, then I will not die this session. Uh, so I will just uh, tell you every detail of Pastor Wood since the day he was born. Um, it was a regular day. Weather was fine. Uh, he was born like 2.30 in the afternoon or so, is what he was told. He doesn't remember it, obviously. It was a, quite some time ago. Uh, <laughs> you notice how in all none, serious, of us, none of us called you on it because we knew you'd, you'd peter out. Like, we knew you'd flame out. <laughs> to take, you didn't even take you a sentence. You couldn't even get the day two, and you were already done. Don't you know. even. Okay. Well, now I'm challenged. I'm going to keep going. It's too late. It's too late. You already broke it. You already broke it. Uh, Pastor oh. Wood is oh. a lawman. Uh, he was a Texas Ranger in his younger days, and he is a man of the Old Testament in his older days. Uh, oh, Eric, I thought we were friends. Uh, <laughs> we all just Eric saw from chat. North Foundry said that if the pastor dies, uh, North Foundry will give away a gift certificate. So I suppose I could take one for the team there. Uh, We'll see how it goes. Uh, I rolled poorly on the <laughs> so it, we it's a good turn chance. our guns to wood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shima Two just pulls like guys, a blazing and then... <laughs> saddles and just takes <laughs> Yeah. Take myself oh, hostage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my introduction. Okay, perfect. Uh, <laughs> next up, Melissa, tell us about Marie. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Marie Wynn is a jazz singer. Uh, stage name of Sissy May. Um, she used to do some singing, uh, and now she does some, uh, investigating, um, and she's lost a bit of her mind. Um, she's, was running scared for a bit and she had a bit of uh, temporary insanity 
and yeah. now is making really, really wise choices with her uh, new group of friends. Was that the first bout of madness we had in the campaign? I, th I think that was our first, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think so. so. There weren't any huge sanity uh, dips in, in, in Savannah, so... But there are some big ones here in LA. So yeah. So 10 pen sanity mm -hmm. is when you lose five or more. So we'll have to dig into what the long-term effects of that bout of madness is for Marie and whether or not it uh, comes back to haunt her. Uh, but fortunately, we were doing the math. Uh, she is just by this much outside of her underlying insanity fragility moment where she... It's a good thing you guys waited a couple hours. If you would have gone back immediately... Marie would probably be like uh, in, in sobs and fits right now, but because you waited a little bit longer, let her calm down. So that's good to know. Uh, next up, my try. Tell us about Shima. I am Shima Ron, your uh, student researcher who is a uh, six three and built like a linebacker, and I was feeling like almost guilty about how much uh, luck I had. But then we ended last session with a gun to my head, so I don't feel that guilty anymore. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm probably not going to be able to use it. So it's mm. like, definitely uh, won't use uh, it with the first roll when we roll in, <laughs> and, we'll, and then that will determine a lot of things thereafter. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're in a you're in a bit of you're in a bit of trouble. But you did bring in some friends, so you guys do have some. Yeah, I mean, so I hope has what looks good with brain matter all over him because that's yeah. probably going to happen. <laughs> it, I think it will. It, it, it would be a nice contrast to like the sort of the earth tones of his normal clothes to get a nice little bright red <laughs> so, or purple. I mean, nice. a little bit of red, like a pop, like yeah. an accent pop. Yes. <laughs> accent color. Exactly. Uh, all right, Ashley, tell us about Dr. Beverly Key. Is our professor of anthropology and, um, She's still a little crazy, not like in the actual like technical sense, but just like her brain has just been going through it today. Uh, she went crazy at the college campus, like discovering like what is nectar and finding out that it's a living thing. Um, and then the group kind of like convinced her to come along to this, you know, back here again. And uh, she wound up killing a man and then her basically like apprentice Shima killed two men um and then <laughs> and then now there's a gun at her apprentice's head and and she's just uh terrified this whole situation awful perfect uh it is awful you're absolutely yeah. right uh yeah you guys have killed i think the three the two of you have done all the killing so far uh on the return trip I think uh, so. Yeah. The academics have just been blasting away and taking people out. We've got some pretty great. Pent up <laughs> aggression. Like people yeah. fucked up some books, and so we're here to fuck them up in return. I mean, honestly, uh, I get it. I get it. Like, it, there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of deadlines. A lot of papers to grade. A lot of yeah. papers to write. Uh, there's a lot of pent up aggression. Um, there's so I don't really approve of the violent outbursts, uh, Ashley and Shyam. I, I feel like that's really uh, kind of. I mean, come on. There's more elevated ways to deal with your problem That's solving, but hey, fair. <laughs> but I understand it, even if I don't, under, if I don't. Under. All right. And then finally, uh, finally, we have Patrick Price. Long tells about Patrick. Yes. Patrick Price here. Your friend, your barber. <laughs> right. So getting a little animalistic, that dog in me. <laughs> That's true. So you got affected by a skill that those little minor mouths have, the small ones that you guys have been encountering, um, which, let's see, looking at my notes, you're almost, yeah, you're almost to the woods, almost to the woods. Uh, but yeah, that's the one that where you have to spend either like a point of sanity or some luck is how I've converted it from uh, Eternal Eyes uh, in the Trail of Cthulhu. Cause there's like a different, there's like spins that you can do and internalize to, to help get it. And so I've just converted it to either luck or sand. Okay, guys, we ready to go? So, no. oh yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so you all reunited uh, on the relatively rain soaked streets of Pasadena, which is the city where uh, the Trammell's mansion is. Uh, but Bev lost control of the vehicle that she and Shima ran because she was still white knuckling it from her time 
yeah. at UCLA earlier this afternoon. Uh, this is all happening. This has been one hell of a day. Uh, and you ran it off the road. Fortunately, there was no severe injuries, but you did total, you know, ruin the car to the point where it couldn't drive. But your compatriots were nearby. And so you were able to get back together. You didn't go back to the hotel. You already had your stuff. Uh, so you decided to lay low near some warehouses. And I think that was when Shima, you contacted Johnny because you all decided you wanted to go back to Trammell's mansion fast because the longer you wait, the more likely he was to reinforce. And so if you got back there fast, you might be able to get inside and see what's going on in there. Uh, and so you contacted Johnny. Uh, Shami, you managed to convince him and one of his friends, Paulie, to come help you all, despite the fact that Akone, Massimo Akone, was telling him, you know, like, we're, at, we're in this Cold War state. We don't really want to kind of go full, full violent with them. Uh, but he decided to come because he loves you. Uh, and so he also brought some guns and such, right? Uh, so you all made a, <laughs> made a plan, and that plan was to drive these two vehicles directly onto the grounds, just like, just, just guns blazing, and you crashed <laughs> uh, Polly's uncle's truck into the conservatory, which actually worked out really well. Patrick, Polly, and Pastor Wood, the three Ps, uh, you breached the conservatory, you fought off one of those small mouths, and then you gained entry into Trammell's study. Uh, Marie, Bev, Shima, John, you got into a shootout in the yard with some of the guards from the carriage house. You killed a few, as already has been mentioned. Uh, and you, a few of you talks, got some shots, I think, back as well. I think some of you took some damage. Uh, once you got inside the mansion, uh, Bev, you started searching through Trammell's study. You were trying to find the books that you had on that list from Echeverria's auction. And so you're going through here and there. Polly was helping you out. He was trying to steal some of the paintings. Uh, Patrick, you managed to break into Trammell's private desk and found this like nasty tome. Uh, but that was thrown into Bev, Bev's pile as well. Uh, the rest of you were searching the mansion. Uh, you found a couple more animated mouse. Uh, eventually, you made it upstairs. You found an a, a battered Abraham book vault uh, that is not really conscious, but you guys have been carrying him around. Uh, you didn't really find any sign of Trammell or Captain Walker, however. Uh, Pastor Woody started a fire in the master bedroom, which is going on. Uh, and Shima, you got stabbed while you were trying to force this pair of cowering servants out of one of their rooms. Johnny shot the guy and then nearly shot him a second time in the head. Uh, but some cooler heads, I guess, prevailed, sort of. But you left them there. All the while, uh, Marie, you had been hearing faint music uh, from somewhere in the house. And eventually... It seemed process of elimination. It was from the basements. And so all of you went downstairs into the bowels of the house. Bev, uh, a couple of you noticed, I think Bev saw it first. You noticed a secret panel in one section of one of the cellars of, the, of this house. You, and then you slid it open. Shima and Pastor Wood, you went through first, ready for a fight. And you found inside a quite literal orgy uh, of tangled bodies and writhing massive tongues tongues that were protruding from this gargantuan mouth that had that was taking up and still is the entire wall one entire wall of the basement and there were also guards who both pulled guns and both pointed them at each of your temples and that's exactly where we're going to start so i'm going to say the camera zooms in to the eyes of shima of pastor wood as you're taking in the fullness of this room. You see all these bodies, the scent, the smell in here is hideous. The sound of the music is tugging away, uh, but it's hard not to look at this massive mouth. I need you both to roll sanity tests. Let's start there. Oh boy. Me, uh, 13 under 54. That's a success. Take one point of sand loss. Sorry, give me just one second. All right. As success with an Okay. Eight. Both of you can take one point of sand loss. So you're staring at things. Maybe it's the fact that these small mouths that have somehow prepared you, or maybe you're just stealing yourself, but you don't you don't go off into like this full uh, kind of crazy panic. But nonetheless, it is still a point of sanity. And so as you come through ready to fight, like there is a, a moment where you were just the, the, this is small bit of hesitation, a small little bit of uh, like a frozen moment here as you're staring at this huge thing. And both of you can roll with a penalty die, but you can choose what you want to roll. You can either roll listen 
or you can roll spot hidden to see if you caught any sign that you're being flanked by these guards. I'm going to roll spot hidden. Okay. Uh, spot hidden for me as well. Okay. Just remember, with penalty, uh, you are staring at this massive mouth that has you distracted, so it's not going to be as easy to, to spot this uh, this little ambush they had set up for you. Uh, thematically appropriate. Roll the 69 that under boy. you. Ah, yes. Love it. I like it. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh, success for... Roll yeah, another D100. Oh, I'm Did you sorry. roll with... You gotta roll the penalty die. Sorry, sorry. I'm That's all stressed out about the game. It's all good. I mean, as long as you roll under 70... Yeah, you're fine. Okay, so both yeah. of you notice. So what this I'm, what I'm gonna allow you to do then, because uh, normally, surprise attack, they get a surprise attack off. Uh, now, they were ready for you. Uh, you guys come through the door. You've been making a lot of noise. You crashed a and truck into the conservatory and so they were down here ready and they're going to pull the trigger however uh you all whatever it might be maybe you just see the glint of the gun you maybe you see a flash of movement to the side it gives you an option you don't have to do this you can choose to try to dodge that's all you can do right here is to try to dodge now dodging from a firearm is meaning you're diving for cover and you're forfeiting your action there is only one place in the area that you can dive for cover. And that is in the massive tangle of bodies and tongues that lay in front of you in this writhing orgy. That is where you could potentially dive. So it's a choice. It's entirely up to you guys whether you want to do that. Otherwise, they hit. Yeah, yeah. Um. I mean, Shima's a bodybuilder, right? Couldn't I just hide behind her? <laughs> that means she takes two shots, though. So, and they're I'll, gonna I'll accept it. <laughs> so kind of you. Uh, no, I'll dodge. I am dodging. No, I I will as well. And um, okay. Narratively, it it feels like something that uh, her survival becomes a lot more important now that she's losing sanity. Okay, so it's both of you still need to make a dodge roll. Tool. Yeah, both of you need to make a dodge roll to actually dive into this tangle. And if you're successful, you get in there without getting hit. If you fail, you still get shot and you get into, and you dive into. Uh, I'm taking a boost. That's fine. Uh, 23 under 75 then. Okay. Uh, 32 under 70. The guns come out. They both aim. They both fire. But the two of you, again, you just out of the out of the side of your eye. It's almost this moment of perfect like synergy between the two of you as you just leap forward into this tangled, hideous mess. You can feel arms grabbing at you. You can feel legs wrapping around you. you can feel these this tongue with all of its tiny small mouths and teeth that are sticking out of the of the flesh kind of slither against you here and there but as the gun sh as the gunshots go off you hear oh, ah, ah, as the bullets are not hitting you but rather one of the many celebrants that are inside of this orgiastic pit and now we're going to go into combat guys uh, as we are now in initiative uh so I warned you about this ahead of time that you've got Polly behind you, but Polly has been carrying those very big paintings that Bev wanted to do that. So you got to, and you guys tell them to a degree what you want him to do. Uh, and then, uh, so Polly's ready to go. Polly's this tiny little guy. He's back there. He's got these guns and he's like, he's like, what, what the, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck is he hears the gunshots go off. Um, so Patrick or Beverly or Marie, do any of you like shout out anything to him as he starts to panic? Get out of here, Polly. Get the car ready. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. 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 And you see, and he doesn't even look at that point and he just runs upstairs uh, and he's gone. So Polly has actually left the building. I'm not even going to require him to roll sand because he never went inside and saw the thing. Uh, all right. So then. Which car is he getting ready? The one that's. Totaled by gunshots, or the one His that's totaled truck. by running through a building. His uncle's truck. Yeah, his uncle's <laughs> truck. Of course, he thinks it's sturdy. It's in a greenhouse uh, right now. <laughs> all right, Marie, it is your turn. Pastor, you can't go this turn. You're just, you're just, you're, just, your your body surfing. Uh, Marie, what are you doing? Marie, she's gotta come in and shoot. Like that's. I feel like that's what. Okay. 
You hear the gunshots. You see Pastorwood and Shima go diving forward. You see the writhing mound of bodies in this hideous display of, of sexual perversion. You see as you step in to shoot at one of the guards on either side, that's when your eyes are drawn to the left-hand wall and you see not the small mouth that you saw on the underside of the mattress that hissed and spit at you, but one that has to be a hundred times larger and from it have unfurled at least three or four different massive tongues, 10 feet long, 12 feet long, each with these tiny teeth or mouths or eyes that are just loping all around uh, as you step inside. I need you to roll sand. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um... All right. 11 under 50. All right. That's a one point sand loss. It's the minimum. Uh, and what does it look like as you step in and you see this thing? What's that like? What's that sudden reaction that you have for your one point? And how's that look? So I would say that she like knew that we were coming here. And so like she was really like gripping her gun really super tight because it's like, okay, we're going in the freaking basement. I already saw what was just under a bed and there's going to be a thing here. And so it's kind of one of those things where like she was stealing herself as hard as she could and it still wasn't enough. Like the mm -hmm. scale of what she saw earlier still didn't prepare her. And so she's really just like clenching just so hard. And she kind of like blinks a couple times. Um, and then she really wants to like remember that she wants to shoot at the person that was shooting it. Um, okay. Her friends. There are two on either side of this door as you pop in. Both have turned their guns down and they've fired a few times into the mass of bodies. And you see eruptions of blood and like kind of a scream or yelp of pain. You see that those that were hit, however, was not Pastor Wood and Shimer, who you, you can see now are kind of getting folded almost like they're in quicksand underneath this 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 grouping of bodies. But even the person that was shot, who is bleeding profusely from this chest wound, has not stopped their depraved behavior. They are still very much caressing and letting be caressed by this tongue that wraps around them. And you can see as it screams out in ecstasy, it also leans forward and it is like kissing and mouthing one of the small dripping mouths on the side of this tongue. Go ahead and shoot at one of these guys there, Marie. Yeah, and she's like in the back of her mind, thinking like, "Oh, what, 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 what are we gonna do about that?" I, I don't a person with gun, and so she's gonna shoot at the person with the gun. Okay. Um, that's right. I've got to go back over. Not there. I've got to go over here to my handgun. I mean, I'm gonna take two boosts so that I'm tr attempting to roll under forty because okay. I've got okay. twenty in guns. Like. <laughs> Um. Oh, are you freaking a kidding 97. me? That's a fumble. Okay, so one thing I want to draw your attention to, uh, because we talked about this off air, but I'm going to talk about it here. We have various uses of luck. We are using a variety of luck rules. You do actually have a firearm malfunction that's about to happen. But if you wanted to, you can spend 10 luck to ignore that fumble. It doesn't mean you hit. It just means you ignore the fumble. Now, Normally, a fumble in this case is going to be either like the gun jams or the gun explodes in your hand or something like that, uh, and it would require you to fix it. So that's up to you. What I, I mean, I'll, I, I'll tell you exactly what the effect would be is that your gun's going to jam and be busted, and you're probably not going to be able to use it uh, for the oh, rest no. of the combat. Oh, no, I need a gun. Yeah, I, yeah. I need my gun um, or the okay. gun that was handed to me like 20 minutes ago. Um, right. So, yes, I will spend the 10 luck. Um, okay. And uh, that'll bring me down to 49 luck. And that's still a fumble. The fumble train has continued. Okay. Well, I mean, again, you're not going to suffer the, the terribleness uh, right. of the foul, yeah. malfunction. So, so you're going to fire away and you hear a click, click, click. But once you kind of get it fixed, you realize you go, to, you go to pull the gun up to shoot at the guy. You miss as he has now kind of seen you at this point and he's dodged off to the side. And he's going to go next and he's going to return fire at you uh, as he now sees you. So we're going to call this guard number six, uh, who, uh, as we all know, is just trying to put his kids through college. Uh, and so he's going to fire at Marie. Uh, OK, here we go. 
Uh, good news, Marie, is that as he, as he starts strafing away from the mass of bodies uh, and he kind of gets up against one of the walls and fires in your direction, uh, he kind of stumbles a bit as one of the celebrant's legs sticks out from the mass and his gun and his shot kind of goes up and hits the ceiling and you feel a little bit of dust fall down onto you. Uh, but you are not, in fact, hit. Uh, so I skipped Oof. over you, Pastor, because you forfeited your turn um, for the dodging. But now we go to yep. Patrick. It's your turn. What do you want to do, man? I'm going to step in and get a nice view. All right, man. Sanity test. Thank you for doing You're such a... Man, you're so fun to play with. Oh, goodness. I'm like that jackass Polly who just ran away. Patrick steps in. <laughs> goes immediately insane. <laughs> as he says, as Patrick's like, yeah, run away, dude. <laughs> Anyone oh, fail? fails. Patrick, go ahead and roll a d10. Holy. Yep. It's oh, a d10. No. Oh, my God. Please yep. roll low. Please roll low. It's a nine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Patrick, you, you step inside, and you go to pull the gun, and you turn it to the left to fire at whoever it was that just fired at Marie. None of you are behind cover. You're just like a handful of feet from her firing, firing, firing. And then you look up and you see on the wall this massive mouth that's 10 feet across, 10 feet tall, tons and tons of rows of teeth that seem to dig further and further back. Like Each time you look at it, you see another row of teeth. You can see eyes starting to pop up here and there and dart around, some with vertical irises, some horizontal, some with no irises at all. You see a tongue kind of wrap around what looks like one of these one of these celebrants in the middle of this orgy and lifts you up or lifts them up and they're just kind of streaming ah! in ecstasy as opposed to any manner of, of like pain or fear. And you just, your mind just breaks at the sight of this. Uh, okay. So. How much could it be stun locked? Okay. Ultimate denial. The stories that Henslow's told didn't really believe didn't expect this happening coming in here this is what ruined my friend like, this is all trickery this isn't real <laughs> what is this okay okay and so uh you're gonna suffer for the next six rounds this this state of ultra paranoia everyone is out to get you every somebody has tricked you you can't trust anybody you can only trust yourself the whole janet is the one who got all these people together not you you don't know any of them. It was Janet. And Janet and you have never had a great relationship to begin with. You can't trust anyone. So you're going to be suffering from that for the next six rounds. I'm going to go ahead and pull a little die over there. Okay, man. Uh, so that is both. Uh, I don't know what happens when both you trigger a temp and sand or an indefinite sanity at the same time. But either way, you're going to get that bout of madness, even if you were to to get the other one. So we're just going to stick with it because indefinite. And I lose my action and everything. It's just, I just go crazy. Um, I think I, that's a good question, actually. I don't know what's going to happen as you step in uh, and you feel yourself. No, I, I, I say you can go ahead. Um, but maybe we'll say, like, roll randomly, maybe who you start sniping at or... Um, or like, how do you think your paranoia affects your decision making here? How about that? You tell me. I would just shoot the wall. At, like unbelievably weird. So shoot it. You're gonna so just change and just shoot at the at yeah. the. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I like that. Go ahead, and do that. <laughs> oh goodness. Ninety-five. It's no good. Ninety-five. Okay. I just start shooting uh, at the ceiling. Okay. Blankly. Uh... 95? I, isn't that a... No, it's 96. That would be for you. Okay. So you just start firing away. And although the mouth takes up the vast majority of the wall, you can you can definitely tell like some of the bullets that hit as you just fire away. Like It doesn't seem to be spouting any kind of thing that you recognize as blood. Uh, and uh, we'll continue on to Shima, who is rolling around. You've spent your turn. You're dodging out of the gunfire. And then we come around to Guard 1, who is trying to put guard the deceased guard force kids through college uh so he's got two targets in here he's got marie and he's got patrick i'm gonna 50 50 at one to three is marie it's gonna be a four he's gonna fire at patrick so as you're firing away at this wall uh this uh other fellow who tried to shoot at shima before is now going to turn his attention to you and he misses again uh no one get the brass out of a barn here 
uh, as he starts firing and firing and maybe again, the, the room itself is just is cluttered with bodies and it's slippery and sticky all at the same time. And so footing isn't the easiest. Uh, and it's also fairly dark in here. There's a lantern or two, uh, but there's not like overhead lights or anything like that. So uh, he fires away. You feel the wind, the vague wind, Patrick, of like a, of a bullet fly past you, but uh, it doesn't actually hit you. Uh, and then we will go to Johnny's turn. Um, okay. Beverly, you're the last one in the back. I'll uh, say, I mean, he's, he's probably, he's like, Shima, Shima, you all right? What, do you, what would Beverly, what might Beverly advise him to do here? Do you think, Ashley? Um, Bev would honestly say, those, those bastards tried to shoot Shima. Kill him, Johnny. Kill him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking did! As he starts rushing in, but then he looks up and he sees the mouth. And he too must roll a sand test. Yeah, because um, Bev doesn't know that wall is there. She just knows that's that. true. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You're 100% mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Bev, mm -hmm. give me, roll me a D100. Sure. Let me know how you do. Uh, 23. He passes. He only takes one point of sand. And he's like, what the f Fuck. But he's nonetheless going to see Shima and Pastor Wood are right. Shima! Shima! And he looks down. What the fuck is happening? What the fuck? And he turns around for any like anything that's normal. And he turns and he sees one of these guards with a gun firing at Patrick, firing at Marie. And this makes sense to him. And his hands shaking and he's screaming. Uh, and he's going to fire a shot at one of these guys. And he's going to hit. That a boy. Uh, and so he's like, you die, motherfucker. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with the one point of damage? Not great, but whatever. He still hits him. He still hits him. Uh, so Johnny is in the room. Uh, he has suffered a point of sand loss, but he is in the room. And then finally, uh, for you guys, we come to Bev. What do you want to do? Uh, I think she's going to do the same because she, she just knows maybe he's freaking out about like the orgy in the middle. Okay. But like. So she she does she doesn't care. So she's coming in to shoot. Okay, what are you doing with your big bag of books? And I'm she's assuming gonna... someone set Abraham Bookvald down on one of these chase lounges because there are some lounges in here. So I'm gonna assume I'll that that's what happened. I'll set my books down next to Abraham. Okay, so you set them down, and then you run in, gun raised. You look around and you see the wall. <laughs> Go ahead and roll sand. See how you do. Also a pass. You guys are keeping it together. One point of sand. Hands start to shake. Maybe confusion maybe overwhelms you. Like a, a roiling, like a rolling disgust maybe in your stomach. Uh, but nonetheless, you kind of keep your focus uh, a bit. Uh, you can see that there are two figures that are firing away. It is, it is pandemonium as they're firing at each other. There's all these bodies that are, and you can see the tongues lapping away. Some of them are like sweeping out like whips. Others are just kind of, just kind of curling around. Like they're almost hugging them. What do you do now, Bev? Who do you, who do you attack? What do you do? Mind beginning to shatter a bit. Um, she's going to shoot the opposite of the one that Johnny shot. Gotcha. So, okay. Uh, gotcha. I would like two boost smell. So I'm shooting Got it. for a 40. Mm -hmm. Go for it. 36. So it hits. Okay. Oh, yes. uh, D8 on that gun, I believe. So give me that Mine roll. Mine is a D10. Oh, that's right, because you have the special. Nice. You uh, you bought it special. That's my right. Derringer, yeah. You don't yeah. got the cheapy the cheapy ones. Ah, oh, shit. Just three. Hey, three is better than none. And so you fire. Maybe you hit him in the back. He's like, oh, and he turns around uh, and you see uh, his uh, his face is kind of one filled with anger, frustration. And it's now the mouth's turn. <laughs> oh, did you guys think he was going to get it was going to get to go? Oh, I thought he was going to no. hate that <laughs> sentence. Just you know, going <laughs> like that's it. It's the giant <laughs> mouth's turn to go. Um, there are in this room. I have so many options. So all of you in Johnny are my options. So I have six different options for targets. 
uh, I'm going to get and I get and everybody to do, else do... and everybody else. There's lots yeah, of other. There, there's like no. plenty more people. <laughs> there is that's not the case. That's not yeah. true at all. Uh, <laughs> two of you are about to get uh, something up. Something up. Uh, okay, so first one is going that to be Shima and Pastor Wood got buried and are harder <laughs> targets. That is a very good point. That is a very good point. If if you that's come fair. up as a target for them, I will I will give them like a penalty die or something. Uh, okay, so Bev, you uh, are going to be a target for one of the tongues as this tongue comes up, reaches up almost like a snake, like its head coming up out of the grass. And you see as it turns sideways, this, this mouth begins to open and it tries to lunge out and lash around you. And these things, again, it has like 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 two to three meters worth of reach. And you can see that they're all in this big clumped uh, section and it's going to lash out at Beverly. All right, Beverly. Um, oh God. Okay, I've, I have uh, I have succeeded. Uh, you can, however, um, I won't tell you how well I've succeeded because this is an attack. So you can still kind of do what you normally would do. You can choose to try to dodge. You can choose to try to fight back. Um, I think I would rather try and dodge. Okay, so uh, that would be a dodge test. Go right ahead. And again, there's only one place to dodge. It is in that big yep. tangle of bodies in the ground. And uh, I failed. You failed. So it will, in fact, hit you. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is, is it's not going to do that much damage. Uh, so it's only going to do three points of damage. Okay. The bad news is that you are grappled as it wraps <laughs> around you. And you can already feel it beginning to tug you across the room towards the mouth itself. It's like reeling you in. And then the second one I'm going to go for with one of its other tongues will in fact be Pastor Wood, but I did say I was going to give a penalty die because you are still in that tangle, so I'm going to, I'm going to hold true to that. Uh, that would be a success on the first uh, and a success on the back, second. Though, right? you, can, you can fight back, yeah, if you want to. Uh, I do want to. Or you can continue to try to dodge. It's up to you, but you're, gonna, you're, can, you're continuing to kind of, you know, you can do that as well. Uh, this dodge would not lose my turn because it's not ranged, correct? Right. So this one's just trying to like, you're digging under, digging under, digging under. Like we might play it out that you get a penalty later on yeah. for something, but like, yeah, you can totally do that. I'm fine with that. I'll try to dodge try to... then. Okay, go for it. Uh, I'll, I'll take one boost. Okay. Uh, 40 under 75. Uh, that is not, mm. so that is the, so you're trying to dodge, right? Dodge, yes. Okay, you're good. So success is good. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Because he only had a regular success, the mouth. Uh, and so as you feel this tongue emerge from between the tangle of these bodies, you you actually see at one point as you dig deeper into it, the face of Pierce Patchett, the father, the Catholic priest that you woke up next to in the flop house. And he turns and he looks at you and there's like, there's no recognition in his face. But you can see his face is just half anguish, half ecstasy. And he just kind of opens his mouth and kind of leans forward like he's going to try to kiss you. And you just forearm him away a bit and you keep pushing and the tongue wraps itself around him instead of you. And that is the end of the round, except there's one other thing I need to do. You guys don't need to know about it. It's not important. Well, it's not important. What other thing? What, what, what are you doing? What, what's, 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 okay, what's the other thing? Okay, he's still rolling. That's, that's fine. <laughs> not important. Don't right? worry about it, guys. He's okay. rolling for yearning. It's fine. It's You're nothing we need to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> the mouth is like hey, suddenly you hear the mouth say hey how you doing uh, and it's, it's changed its complexion <laughs> go back up to the top Marie your turn you're standing in the open guns have been drawn uh, Patrick is next to you firing wildly uh, at the at the wall Beverly has just been grappled and is being dragged over top of the mound of bodies towards the mouth Shima and, and Pastor Wood are still trying to untangle themselves from the orgy and you can see it's you, Patrick, and Johnny that are still standing. Uh, what would you like to do? Um. So that is a very good question. Marie is probably most concerned about the team member being pulled by sure. the that that seems. Uh, Worthy of her attention. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. he is screaming her head off. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
<laughs> I, I uh, <laughs> the the problem with that, of course, is that I've got a like a little one uh, D four knife to try to deal with that. But you, you just know. describe what it is you try to do, and we'll go from there. Let's just don't don't worry about the character sheet. She's, just describe what you'd want to do, and we'll figure it out. She is going to. This, okay, this is what I'm picturing in my head. Um, she is going to kind of go, you know, just a, a couple steps in that direction. I imagine she's got a little bit of movement that she's got to do from where she was standing to where that is. Mm -hmm. And you while she does it. You feel reach and grab like your calf and just sort of caress it. You feel a tongue just kind of lather against your side here and there. As anywhere you move towards the middle of the room, you're moving towards that massive tangle of bodies. Uh what, so what do you do then, Marie? So as she's taking those steps, she's like slipping off these heels that she had on. And oh, so what okay. she wants to do is she wants to sort of kind of jump around this like tongue thing. And basically where like the heels are coming in like one side and the other side kind of mm -hmm. onto this thing. Um, and just see what that does. I love so, it. So like uh, forward of where uh, Bev is. Uh, so you're just trying to like kind of stab it with your uh, with your heels. heels. That sounds wonderful. Yep. Uh, give Some me a. In. Sounds like a brawl. That's awesome. Uh, just do a brawl like melee. Let's see. Yeah, let's just do brawl. Brawl's fine. Do brawl. Okay, I'm gonna take two so that this is a fifty-five. Um, you do that I'm trying what your conscience to allows you to do. That is a two. So. Had I not even taken them, that would have been a like okay. super cool thing. Um, I'll tell you what. But I spent the two anyway. Okay. The fact that it is a two uh, and the fact that it's an extreme success, I'm going to give you an extreme effect. As you stab into it, you see that a burst of saliva or burst of sp some sort of spew just comes out of one of the mouths. And while you don't hear it like yell in pain, you do feel it jerk for a moment. And in so doing, it drops Bev. And so, Bev, you go falling. You're going to be prone, but you're going to slam down in the middle of, like, the dead center middle of this orgy. And you are prone, but you're no longer grappled. And I'll say it, 1d4 was your knife, so give me, like, uh, give me, like, give me 2d4 since you have, uh, since you basically stabbed it. With two your heels. Device. Yeah. <laughs> it's a two and a one, so a three. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Hey. Okay. Excellent. Uh, excellent. But you are right at the edge of this orgy. Beverly is directly in the middle of it. Pastor and Chimer are still kind of standing and finding their way back up. Patrick and Johnny are the only ones now not immediately inside of it. And it's Patrick, it is your turn. You get control. What do you want to do? Wouldn't it... I, I'm sorry. Uh, my dex is higher than Patrick, so wouldn't it be my turn next? What did I say? I said... Oh, I'm sorry. I meant Pastor. I went Pastor. Okay. Yeah. My bad. No worries. Uh, Pastor Wood is disgusted... Uh, this is extremely repulsive to him on many, many levels, especially morally. Uh, but he is driven by a deep sense of duty. It's dangerous. It's ill-advised, but somebody's got to do it. Uh, he's going to stand up as best he can in the middle of this orgy, pull his pistol and just start firing into that wall. Okay, buddy. Uh, you stand right in the middle of the orgy. None of them seem to, by the way be trying to hurt you guys like all the, the the bodies around you they're just they're going about their business without concern for the violence that is transpiring around them none have seemed to have been interrupted so go ahead and fire yeah fire away as you start shooting at the wall at the mouth i'd like to use rapid fire uh so i can get off three shots yeah. um and they're all going at the wall i doubt i'd kill it in the first shot but even if i did i'm still firing three at it because this Please. thing is messed up go you know what man Shit, you could fire 10 of them. I don't care. Uh, 94. <laughs> uh, so that's a miss. Okay. My first, first one. one. I don't think it's a fumble, though. Okay. First one, as you fire, you, you, you just feel your leg kind of get shifted and the gun flies up and you shoot up into the ceiling. Second one. Uh, second one is an 11, which is extreme success. Excellent. That'll hit. And then uh, 40, which is hard success. Okay. Roll your damage. Uh, so I always forget four plus two the, for the first one is six. Okay. And Got then it. eight. Okay. Uh, All right. So that is, okay. Got it. So you fire away. You see like 
the bullet just seemed to kind of disappear into the roof of one of the of like the mouth between rows of teeth. You see a tiny little dripping of something come down. You're not sure if it's blood. You're not sure if it's something else. But you see the mouth like twitch ever so slightly. But your spot hidden's really high. You see that it doesn't seem to be reacting as well. Like the like it just starts to stitch itself up almost immediately. It's just you can see the whatever on the underside of the mouth is, it just starts to grow over top of the bullet. Uh, and then uh, that is Pastor Wood's turn. And we go to guard six, uh, who has been shot by Johnny, um, who he's got the easiest targets he has now are Johnny and Patrick. Johnny just shot him, so I don't see any reason why he wouldn't shoot back at Johnny. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have him shoot right back at Johnny. I'm going to play with my toys for a minute. I'm going to hit. Uh, and so... I, Johnny doesn't seem like the guy, the kind of guy who's going to die for cover. Uh, I think he's going to stand and take it. Uh, so he's going to get shot for the, uh, for some damage. Um, okay. All right. So you hear him go, oh, you, I'm going to rip your head off. I'm going to feed it to that freaking mouth. Uh, as he says that, blood spits out of his mouth. Um, okay. Now it is Patrick's turn. I'm going to back up slowly towards the corner of the room. Shakily okay. aim at all the movement in the room. Okay. And nobody come near me. I'm going to shoot. And I'll just shoot anything that comes towards me. Okay. So you're just back in like a corner of the room. Gun kind of shifting about, shifting about. Uh, and I'll say that anybody with a de- anybody with over 50 on your spot hidden or your listen can see that or hear Patrick doing that. Don't worry about rolling. You, you've kind of observed it. If not, you haven't noticed it yet. Uh, Shima, your turn. You managed to untangle yourself. Uh, you can stand up from prone. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, I love that, like, Pastor Wood is taking this horrific moment to lean into his drive. I think Shima is leaning into the loss of sanity. Like that golden tree energy is turning into pitfall energy. And uh, she is um, becoming a lot more instinctual. And uh, she turns and tries to take a headshot at this dude. The one, the one that shot Johnny, I assume? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, go right ahead. Okay. And that that, that's is, guard number six. And Just so feel a regular roll, <gasps> but I'm happy to spend luck. If, okay. Uh, spend the six. Okay. Roll your damage. I think you have a D8 gun. You have the one of the revolvers, I, I think, that uh, I that Johnny brought. So, yeah. Roll I your do. D8. Uh, three. Okay. So now... You're kind of standing amidst the writhing bodies and tongues in the middle of the room. Johnny's standing over by the door, blood coming out of his, you can see underneath he's got a, you know, he's got this kind of, you know, almost like a, like a stevedore like jacket, right? Like he's definitely almost like a dock worker, but you can see a blossom of blood where he got shot pretty poorly, uh, like right in the chest, right in the stomach somewhere. And he's standing off to the side and he's firing at this guy who is backing up, backing up in the opposite corner. You see Patrick now has started to retreat and he's like kind of panicking, panicking, panicking. Beverly is was crowd surfing, but then Marie lunged and stabbed this tongue. And now the two of them are kind of tangled up in the middle and you fire at this guy and he gets ooh, hit again and he looks towards you. He looks towards Johnny, his gun kind of going back between both of you. He is still up uh, and it'll be the other guards turn. Uh, who now has, I think there, I think you have made yourself a target Shima and I think Patrick is still a, is still a target and Johnny is a target. So I'm going to, I'm going to say those are the three most likely targets. Um, actually I'm going to say pastor Wood too. is Patrick you were firing. Uh, I think Marie, yeah, I think Marie and, and Beverly are kind of a little bit out of it at this point. Okay. Uh, it's going to be Patrick. So Patrick, this guy takes a step or two in your direction and goes to fire. I'm going to let you, you effectively readied an action. So he's coming over to you and he's getting ready to fire. I'll let you fire your gun first and then we'll resolve his attack if he's still living. If you want to take a shot. Yeah, I'll shoot him. You see him coming at you. I told you. Okay. 
and it's a 31 I missed okay so you fire and the and you can see like maybe you like you can knock his hat off he was wearing a hat and it gets kind of flown off to the ground but he holds it up and he just fires in your direction now uh that's a hit that's a four i just rolled a four you are going to take four points of damage uh, as he fires and he hits you as you're in the corner he's just basically slow walking in your direction just firing firing one after the other uh okay uh, it is now Johnny's turn. Johnny will continue to fire at the one that Shima just fired at. He's going to like step forward a little bit closer and he's going to fire again. Um, this is going to be, and he hits again. Johnny is just the best. It's a shame. Johnny is the best. Of course, Johnny sucks at damage rolls. That's two ones I've rolled <laughs> on both of his shots, oh, but no. he's hit both shots at least. Oh, and, no. Hey. He's hitting, at least. He's hitting. They're just not the greatest of shots. Uh, unfortunately, that guard is still up. Uh, Beverly, we come to you. You're a prone. You're in the middle of this tangle. Marie is next to you, having just freed you. The um, You can see the uh, the tongue kind of curls up. Again, it's very snake-like in its behavior, but the mouth kind of turns sideways, and you can tell it's still interested in you, uh, but you are free of it. What would you like to do? You're still prone, though, we'll say. Um, so is getting up my entire round? Uh, no, I'll say because of the nature of the bodies, because, like, you're not so much falling directly to the ground. You're kind of, like, on this undulating. Think of it like you're on a waterbed almost. Uh, I'll say you can do something, uh, something decent. Like, you can you can take a, a decent action. I would say you probably can't run, like, a marathon or anything, but you can do something. Uh, oh. She definitely does not want to get grabbed by that tongue again. Okay. Um, so is the doorway still flanked and blocked by both of the guards, or did one of them, like, move in? I'll say, as you get up and look, you can see one of them has now, like, like there's the, we'll call it the north wall, let's say, just for the sake of orientation. That's where you came in. Uh -huh. You see that there's another door, actually, to the south. Uh, but... In the corner to the left of, like, we'll call it the Northwest, you see Patrick Price is, like, in a corner, and he's firing at this guy slowly closing in on him. In the other corner, you can see Johnny and this other guard are, are facing off, and Shima in the tangle is firing as well. So there's, like, two-on-one kind of off in that corner. Patrick is kind of one-on-one, -on -one, and then you, Pastor, and, Mar and Marie are kind of more in the midst of the, in the center of the room, so to speak. That's what uh you see. Yeah, I think Bev would maybe run to the south door then that she sees and okay. see, if, see if she can get that kicked open and get another area of ex uh, possible escape for us. Absolutely. Uh, no roll necessary. You just kind of taint. You just kind of climb over a couple, almost lose your balance once or twice. As you step up to the door and push it open, it opens without issue. But I want you to give me a spot hidden. And okay, as you do so. Uh, cause it's, uh, it's not automatic that you notice this. Okay. It's a lot uh, of things going on. One? Hey, if that's what your conscience allows, you go right ahead. It does. And I pass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank goodness you took it. You see a man a couple steps from the door and it was hard to see cause again, this room is relatively dark. Uh, there's a handful uh -huh. of lanterns here and there. And he is in all he's wearing is one of the only people in here wearing clothes or than you and the guards because none of the bodies in the middle are. You see him kind of leaning up against the wall and he has this silk robe in another life, in another world, in another room. It might be beautiful, but here it is not. It is tarnished with blood and you would imagine all manner of other bodily fluids, uh, but it is floral and silk and you would guess extraordinarily expensive. And that's all he's got on. And it is wide open. And he is wide open. And you recognize the face, which is in this kind of half confused, half, half ecstatic state uh, as he's kind of looking around. And you recognize a face from some of those safety deposit box photos. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. We will continue on. It is now the mouse's turn. All right. My primary targets, the easiest targets I have are Marie and Pastor and Shima. Those are the three that are still kind of in the tangle. And so that's what I'm going to focus on. So 
That's what we're looking at. First one's going to be Marie. Second one is also going to be Marie. Two hits on Marie. I'm sorry, oh dear. Marie. Oh, dear. Um, okay. Tongue is going to try to coil and wrap itself around you. Uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, do you want to roll dodge or do you want to roll fight back or anything like that? Um... Uh, do, 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 fight back. Okay, just remember that fight back, you have to do a better tier of success than it does. So a normal success would only be good if it fails. And uh, you oh. would otherwise, you would need to do better. Dodge, it's the tie goes to the dodger. That's the difference. And this dodge. isn't range, so you don't lose your turn by dodging. Yeah. Okay, yeah, dodge. Okay, give it a roll. Give it a roll. Okay. I'm going to take one, so I'm rolling under 45. <laughs> two! <laughs> Another extreme <laughs> success with a two, which is great. It did succeed, but with yours, your, but with your extreme success, you're able to dodge out of the way of it. You see as it kind of lashes down and tries to wrap around you, it pulls into its beautiful embrace something else. Another one of these tongues, though, sneaks up around behind you and will try to do the same. Uh, same deal, same question for you, but it's going to be a penalty die this time because this is the second attack. So dodge or fight back. Um, or just take it and give yourself over to the glory of the <laughs> mouth. <laughs> um, I think I'll try to fight this one. You want to fight back, fight back with a penalty die? You're getting a penalty die for this because it's the second the second time you've been attacked and the second time you're defending. Well, and it's going to be a penalty die either way, right? Whether I dodge or fight back. But fighting back, you have to do better. Oh, than no. It. Oh, that's right. The, yeah, the same yeah. thing. Okay. okay. I'll dodge again. Yeah. All right, taking a boost, so it's under 45 again. Okay. Um, but it's a penalty die at eh, yeah. 79, so... That so works. you will fail. Uh, it will wrap itself around you then, because it did succeed with a 37. Uh, you will take three points of damage as you feel the tongue wrap around you, and about a dozen small mouths begins to nip at your at your fa the fabric of your clothes and your skin, and you even feel some burning uh, as some kind of liquid begins to coat your skin. And you also feel yourself getting dragged closer to the mouth. All right, guys, I got to do something else really okay. fast. Got to roll something. And she's like, she doesn't have her her heels on, so she's just trying to literally with like her bare feet on this like super sticky, icky ground is trying to like try to get traction and is failing miserably at that. Uh, yeah. The good news, it is your turn. You are grappled, however, to break the grapple, you effectively need uh, kind of to, con it's, you're going to contest against it. So, uh, but you can certainly try to do that if you like. It would make the most okay. sense. <laughs> uh, so is this like a brawl again? Yeah, you could do like a melee brawl to kind of like uh, try to push, push yourself from it. It's going to be against it. So it's, a, it's basically like we're just doing an attack against each other and same deal. All right, I'll take one, so I'm rolling out of 35. I'm not particularly okay. strength-based uh, as a character. Um, uh, so f five luck would get me just a straight success. Okay. But it is contested. Mm -hmm. I'll spend the five, so it's at least a success and not a fail. Uh, unfortunately, I got an extreme success on my okay. roll. Uh, and so you are okay, okay, okay. still wrapped up. You feel it <clears throat> squeezing and you feel yourself being dragged across the bodies. Uh, anybody with a spot hidden uh, over like 25 can easily see Marie at this point being dragged across the bodies and is very, very close to the point where I would say very close that you're just a handful of feet from that mouth. Uh, and so it's going to come over now to Pastor Wood's turn. What do you want to do, man? All right. So Pastor Wood is standing. He was just firing at that mouth. Did nothing. Uh, he got two shots landing on it and no real effect. He knows his position is untenable. Uh, his only choice is to move towards a better position for safety uh, and try to attack from there. Uh, he sees Marie being pulled by these tongues. Would I say that he's, would he say that she called out where, uh, Trammel was? That's Bev. 
Bev, would you have? You don't. I don't think you would know That's it's Trammel. You don't. You, I don't think you guys have known. Or no, you guys don't know what. You guys would hear her say, "Who the fuck are you?" As she like has her gun out at him, basically. Yeah, I don't think okay. you guys know what Samson Trammel looks like, actually. I, I don't think we I know do. Patrick does, or he, he saw him, but that's it. You saw I, I only man. saw Walker at the door. Yeah, doing wonderful things on a balcony. <laughs> okay, so uh, he'd be able to recognize that. He'd be able to recognize that robe is what he would do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all about just from the photos. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was involved, but I don't know who he is. is. Is it fair to say Pastorwood would see this man as like a high priority target? I mean, it's up to you whether you think he's a high priority target or not. I don't know. Okay. That's for Pastor no, Woods, that's you know, I, I, contemplation. Whether yeah. I would be able to recognize that there was someone there, like, following Key's eyesight. Uh, so I, I, I would mean, look I have at no that. problem. Your spot hidden so high. I have no problem saying that you can see Bev. You can see Bev saying, who the fuck are you, towards this guy on the ground. Uh, and I would say, even still, you would probably recognize the face from the photos. But he's also off in the corner how you know mostly naked and not not fighting not being part of the yeah. the orgy he's doing nothing he's just sitting in the corner so i imagine pastor woods here would have a very hard choice to make as he sees that uh knowing that their target was to try and find trammel or walker uh and pull them out and then seeing marie being pulled to the wall um what he would decide to do then unfortunately would be to try to take a couple steps towards Marie as he fires at the tongue holding her. Okay. Uh, so, not necessarily okay. like trying to do damage, but just trying to assist her to get out. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, do the same thing. Uh, give us a, give us a roll of your gun. Um, and I'm fine turning it into brawl too. If like mechanically that makes more sense. Well, technically when you fire into melee, uh, which is what this is, you do take a penalty die, I believe with your attack. Um, so if you wanted to get closer and and in that case be in point blank range, that's fine. It just means being closer to the wall. That's all. It's up to you. That's the uh, trade-off. Let's call it the brawl, and I, I'm just firing thematically, if that's okay. Okay. All right. So you shove over and you fire and smash and fire and smash as you're trying to get Marie free. That is a 55 under 65. Okay, that is a success. Regular success. Uh, okay, regular success. I will say that next time Marie attempts to uh, break free, she can have uh, a bonus on this. Um, actually, roll some damage. We'll see how good your damage is. Okay. Uh, for punching is a D3. Uh, so that is a 2. Okay. So this thing definitely, you can see ruptures in this tongue that's been wrapped around her. Uh, I'll say she's not fully broken free, but you can, you can definitely feel Marie that, it, that the tightening has, has, has certainly, uh, has certainly lessened somewhat. Um, okay. Mm. Uh, but you are still, I'm going to say you're still technically grappled. Um, and then it is going to be a guard's turn. It's going to be the guard that's been fa facing off with Shima and Johnny uh, which means he's got a 50-50 shot at who he attacks. One to three, it'll be Shima. It will be Shima. Shima, he decides to turn and shoot at you. Uh, you can again, if you want, dodge, uh, but it will forfeit your next turn. It's up to you. And it means diving back into the pool of bodies. Uh, it's a D8 gun, right? Do it it's a D8 gun. And you know what? I, I'll fucking take it okay oh gosh oh okay. gosh uh so that is Who a knew? success literally on the button uh exactly what their skill is i'm not gonna tell you what it is uh but it was on the button okay and they hit you for three points of damage okay as you get a shot oh, this could so much worse fire, fire, I had really fire, fire, it, but... fire one at shima one at johnny one at shima one at body back and forth he goes uh, then we go to Patrick Price, who you're in the corner by yourself. This guy is barreling down on you. Your brain is like playing all sorts of strange tricks on you. What are you doing, Patrick? When he steps closer to me, I'm going to lunge at him with a knife. Okay. So you lunge, you got your knife, go ahead and roll your brawl. I will attempt to dodge. 96. 
No good. Oh, uh, okay. I also failed. Uh, I also failed. So, uh, so basically, he tries to dodge out of the way. You kind of slam into him, but your knife doesn't quite stab. I'm gonna and he manages it. to shove you off. You're going to push? Yeah, I'm gonna going maniac. Oh, so I'm yes. just okay. not really holding back. So I'm just okay, going man. Away. You're paranoid. Oh, so I see that. Come on. Okay. You can do it. Still fail. So oh, crap. as you go in the first time to stab, like he dodges out of the way, you kind of slam into each other a little bit. He pushes you, you come back in again. But as you come in, I'm going to say because a push has consequences, you come in, you get your, your arm held high and you're about to stab into him, but he's got a point blank shot. And so I'm giving him, uh, you're going to take, uh, you're going to take a shot from his gun for, Two points of damage. So you get like a, a little singe across the side as you leap forward and try to dive at him. Okay. Uh, then, uh, and I am tracking. You're down to, that was your, you're down to four more rounds of this paranoia. Uh, and then Shima, your turn. You see Marie struggling past her, trying to help her. You see Johnny uh, bleeding. I'm, I'm going to continue to shoot at this dude. Okay, go for it. He's just fucking drop me. <laughs> you can do it. He really, do really, it. really wants to put guard number four's kids through college, so it's going to be difficult <laughs> to kill him. Uh, that's a success for the five. Okay, roll your damage. Roll your damage. Freaking could be five it. under 40. Ah, very, very good. Come on. Fan freaking tastic. Oh, God fucking fuck. Just a three. How much? Three? Three is exactly enough. Uh, as you Yay. fire over, ah. like he's he fires at Johnny, fires back at you. As he hit, he he just hit you, then he turns back to shoot again at Johnny. And as he does, you hold your gun up, you fire, and you can see the front of his jaw just kind of explode as the bullet catches him right there. And he goes flying against to the northern wall of the room. His head smashes against, and he just crumples to the ground. And you see Johnny kind of turn to look at you. Blood trickling down from his mouth, blood blossoming in his shirt. And he's like, we need to get out of here. Uh, and uh, that'll be Shima's turn. Guard, uh, that was guard number six. So he's dead. So I'll go ahead and get rid of him. Uh, but guard number one is still up and he's the one over by Patrick. Uh, he is going to attempt to fire at Patrick. No reason not to. He's going to miss firing at Patrick with an 80. Uh, so as a miss, Patrick, as he tries to fire again, you're able to shift and move. And you can see some of the wall behind you explodes, uh, the plaster falling. Uh, then we go to Johnny. Uh, what do you tell Johnny to do, Shime? The two of you are staring at each other. You just managed to kill this guy. He's wounded, but he's like looking at you and he's waiting to see what you tell like what you tell him. It's like, what, what, what do we do? What do we do? Go, you have to go. I ain't leaving you. And he's going to uh, doesn't have the energy to argue. And just tells him, you need to go. Just go. Just go. Uh, roll a persuasion test. Yeah, roll a persuasion test. This just feels right now. <laughs> sure. It doesn't mean he's gonna listen to you. It's just no, it's a real no. test. Uh, God. Oh my! You some of you are on fire tonight with your rolls. I, I, I it's, it's, it's it is a it's I, imbalanced <laughs> where the I, dice I, is going for sure. Okay. I didn't want to succeed, but so yeah. he's like, "You follow me," and he turns to go. Stops in the doorway, and he's just a few feet away from where Patrick's in this tangle. And I, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't take a pop shot on his way out. So he's going to try to shoot Patrick. No, he's going to try to shoot the guy that's on Patrick. He will get a penalty die because Patrick's in uh, close combat, but I'm going to still do it anyway. All right. That's a four on the first attempt. There's a 14 on the second. So a 14 is a success. So Patrick, uh, gun goes off, and the guy in front of you, uh, you can see him. <laughs> And he like doubles over. He's not fully dead, but he's on the ground. And you can see there is like this rupture in the side of his uh, of his jacket, and blood is starting to literally ooze out as as Johnny finally did some damage with a shot. Uh, we go to at this point, Beverly. 
You knock a door open. As you see it swing open, it looks like to be maybe some kind of wine cellar. Um, it's dusty. Uh, and you're standing next to this guy who just, again, he's in this... Uh, uh, kind of just looking around like he's just both exhausted and confused and dazed. He just feels like he's... Uh, uh, what do you want to do, Bev? Can I, like, ask him a question and then run, or is that too much in one action? You can say whatever you want to him. There's, I'm not sure that Bev would think this is a guy who's in a state when you look at him for okay. conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's just kind of um, like, uh, but yeah, you can you can shout something down to him. That's fine. Uh, well, no, I don't know if Throw over right. your shoulder. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can do that. She's going to try dragging him then to the other hallway where we have, um, uh, what, Bookfold? Uh, that's on the other side of the room. You said you ran all the way to the southern side to open the other door. Yeah, uh, it's on so, the other Okay. So you're trying to drag um, him across a, an orgy-filled room where there's tongues and violence. So Do we really want this guy? I don't think this is Walker. This is I up to Bev. Think, this is up to Bev. Bev, Bev makes a decision. Think Bev, I don't think Bev... I think the most she would do look in there. Is there an extra door where he could escape out of, or is he stuck down here? There's two and doors then, out of here. You peek into the wine cellar. Yeah, there's definitely ways out. Okay. But he seems so out of it. She doesn't give a fuck. She's freaked out. She's, she knows he she looks left like the he books. is. He looks like he is really high. And he's yeah. like in this state of like post coital bliss. Yeah. Uh, no, honestly, I think the books would be Bev's top priority. She wants to get the fuck out of here. Okay. So you want to run back and follow yeah. Johnny? You can see that Johnny just, Johnny and Shima took one out. Johnny is was trying to help Patrick. You turn to run and you can see Patrick is kind of getting cornered out. Patrick's bleeding. He's freaking out a bit. Johnny's standing in the doorway and he's like motioning and motioning uh, to Shima. And so you can run what across if that's your decision. How far could I run and then still have actions to be able to shoot at the guy trying to kill Patrick? Uh, I would say you have a choice. You can either get all the way across the room to where Johnny is in the doorway, uh, or you can get about halfway across the room and fire in the direction of Patrick. Because it's not just like a straight shot. Like you're that's, stepping yeah, over that's people what I was and thinking. hopping. Like I'd have to do yeah. a lot of shit. So it's up to you. Um, I think I'll go all the way first and then take a pop shot like Johnny did after like next round on your next round. Gotcha. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you catch up with Johnny. You know what I'm gonna let you do though? Uh, give me a, um, I don't want to say spot hidden doesn't feel quite right, but if you want, give me like an int test. Just okay. give me an int test, Beverly. 25. Hard you success. smell smoke. And as you step into this room, uh, mm -hmm. where you, uh, you had dropped the books before, uh, you can even see a little starting to come down the stairs a bit, but you smell smoke. That's what you've been rolling. You sneaky. That bastard. is what I've been rolling. You sneaky, <laughs> but you're damn right. It is. <laughs> um, yeah. Then Bev's just going to yell at everyone still in the room. Fire, fire. Uh, okay. Hurry up. <laughs> kind of. All right. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is I'm not going to make two attacks with a major mouth this turn. I'm just going to make one, except I'm not going to make the bad news is that I'm not making it with the tongues. I'm making it. Uh, I'm making it with its mouth and it's going to attempt to, as Marie gets slowly pulled, it's going to try to bite you now. And again, you can still be, I'm going to say because pastor has loosened you up a little bit, you can, you can potentially break free. So you'll get a roll against this. Otherwise I wouldn't even have given you that roll. Uh, so you can make a roll to try to fight back or try to dodge. And, and it's more like a, you're kind of using your legs to kind of keep yourself from being fed into this thing. Either way is sure, fine. Sure. And you start to feel like other of these smaller tongues that you can see that are not quite as large or as grown reach out and kind of kind of lick against your face. You can see they wrap against your 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 feet as you drop down the uh, your, your your own shoes. You can see the one of them is still stabbed into one of the other tongues and it's already beginning to try to like pull you into this mouth. Uh, okay. Okay. 
So I am rolling a. Sorry. You can roll dodge. It's the same zeal. Uh, it's not going to okay. make you ungrapple, but I would say you can you can avoid being uh, uh, pulled into the mouth. All right. I'm trying for dodge. I'm taking two so that it's under 55. Okay. 37 under 55. Okay. Oh, yes. So I rolled an eight, which is the equivalent of an extreme success. Uh, so you That's would need better than what I rolled. You. So what is your, what was your target? 55. 55. So that means you would need to roll an 11 to, um, to match, which means you would need to spend 26 luck to be able to dodge getting pulled into the mouth. I only have 44 luck right now. You need to spend 26 but luck it's to the get mouth. there. It's up to you. But it's the mouth. So, yeah. I would tell you, um, it does more damage than the tongue. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, that'll. Uh, I think I did some quick math. I think that'll leave me with 18 luck. Hopefully, that's okay. the right math on that. Okay. Is that what you want to do? Yep. I already did okay. it on my carriage sheet. You manage, as it pulls in, you can feel... One of like well, the first row of this these outer teeth, which are massive, they go to stomp down on you. Your foot gets like wedged between them, but because they're so big, there's these huge gaps, and you're able to as you're trying to kick yourself free, kick yourself free. One of you, like the teeth, the mouth literally crump like crumps down on you, but it does so in a way that it doesn't actually pierce the leg. But as it reaches back up, you can see the smaller extra rows of teeth behind it are now starting to come down and you kick and push yourself back. The tongue is still wrapped around you. You feel yourself kind of get lifted back from the force of the kick and you are not brought into the mouth. All right. Oh, thank goodness. That's, She's that's actually like thankful that her heels were off because she feels like one of her heels would have gotten like stuck between the teeth as she's trying to like push herself backwards or so she's. A little bit okay. freaked out and is hoping Something that everyone is running away. Something else happens. And Bev, you see um, above you, there's this kind of charred stain on the ceiling above you in that small uh, room that you and Johnny are standing in. As you think the fire might have spread down to the to the uh, like the foyer above you, uh, mm. at least as it's starting to, to spread up there. And you can still smell that smoke. We get at the top of the round. Marie is your turn. Uh, password has helped you already, so you're going to get a bonus die if you're trying to break the grapple to get out of here. Uh huh. Go right ahead. Roll your brawl. <laughs> I'm definitely trying to break the grapple and get out of here. So this is nice. a a brawl, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as you're trying so to get out. So I'm going to take another so take. two, which will put it to forty five. Um, okay. So. Marie does so much better when she can charm things and <laughs> do talky talk. You haven't but tried. This stuff not so much. All right, so that's 29 under 45. Okay. Anyone can uh, flirt with the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, should you? Uh, that is a success. You push yourself back, and as you do so, like you can feel the tongue try to like reach. You can tell they have a they have a reach. It's like they don't you, you they don't slither into the next rooms. They only have so much so much reach. And you kind of push, and in doing so, you feel yourself just yank free, and you flop back down, scramble up a little bit here and there, and you are now free of this grapple, no problem. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, all right, then it is then going to go over to Pastor Wood. You're standing right next to Marie. You're you, both of you are just a couple paces from this big heaving mouth, rows and rows of teeth. You can see that ooze dripping down from it here and there. No one, none of these bodies that you're stepping over have interrupted you at all. Once or twice, they kind of look up and they kind of grab at your at your leg or they grab at one of the tongues or they lean out with this blood and mud and fluid soaked face to try to just sort of kiss or or embrace someone but it never never quite pans out for them what do you do pastor oh, good lord uh pardon me miss win and i grab her and i throw her over my shoulder uh and i uh head towards the south doors on the opposite side of the room Okay. Calling out the key, bar the doors, let them burn. Okay. 
Uh, go the, ahead. The wine cellar doors, just to clarify. <laughs> I'm banking on another exit on that side of the room. I might kill us both with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I brought you just... to your death. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Give a me a oh, gosh. <laughs> strength. Yeah, give me a strength. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm an old man. I'm very strong. Uh, I mean, you're gonna, it's it's a question I'll, of whether if if you're strong enough yeah. to grab her and get to and get across no, some fair. of the bodies. It's just really just how I'm gonna far take two, you can get two boosts to give me a seventy on this. Doctor okay. Key went that way and then ran the other way, and now we're yeah. going to the way that she <laughs> just poor was. Patrick's still inside. And now left. Shima is still inside. <laughs> I, I'm I'm assuming they'll get each other out. Sure, 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 yeah. sure, sure, sure. Uh, Twenty eight under seventy. Okay, I'll say you managed to get Marie onto your shoulder, and I'll say you kind of climb off of the orgy of bodies. You're not quite through the door into the wine cellar, but you are at least off the bodies. The tongues, you can they're going to have to slither and try to grab you again, but they are a little bit behind you. You're away from the mouth, and the two of you are near the door. Okay, I give a good perfect. kick as I'm moving through occasionally here and there, step on fingers whenever I can. I am very okay. upset by this whole thing. And you hear, ah! Ah, these like strange like sounds of 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 just orgiastic delight each time you inflict some level of pain. Shima, it is your turn. Uh is the guard menacing Patrick still up? Yes. Uh he doesn't uh, look good, shooting, but he is. Shooting at him while killing uh, Miss okay. Burns, we have to go, we have to go. But I'm gonna I'm assume gonna... that Shima Climbs off the bodies and kind of gets on yes. solid. You're, you're close enough, yeah. So we'll say you start making a handful of steps towards Bev and towards Johnny. You're not all the way there because you stop and you shoot at Patrick. So not at Patrick, but at the guard. Sure. On Patrick. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, farms. All right. He is near the south door. The rope guy. Yes. Uh, God fucking fuck. I'm gonna spend luck. Uh, okay. Seed. All right. Uh, technically you need to roll that, uh, roll another D 100. Cause technically it's, uh, it's firing into melee. You rolled really bad with a 95. So you're probably yeah. still okay. But just in case you roll a malfunction, I just want to make sure. Uh, and then, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. You would have been fine. That's a so, five. Yeah. So spend the luck to make the shot and then give me the D eight worth of damage. Okay. Eight damage. There Shiny, you go. You fire right as this. He's like Patrick. You and him are in this tussle, and he and you like you're stabbing. He's shooting. You're dodging. It's like this gung fu moment, and you manage as you're about to reach in and stab him. You just watch the back of his head explode, and his eye is just one goes to the right, one goes to the left. He spits blood out into your face, and he just falls onto you, and then down. And you see standing behind him just a couple feet away is Shima. Handgun out and extended from her arm right in your direction. She clearly just killed this guy. And panically yelling that we need to go. Okay. Uh, and Patrick, I think actually it is your turn. The two of you are on the same uh, on the same initiative. Sometimes it flips it for me. So Patrick, you, you're, you're on the same initiative. So it is your turn now. Heard somebody shout fire. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to shoot the guy that just fell in front of me. Okay. <laughs> no roll necessary. Bam, bam. You just fire down. Uh, and then I'm just and, getting the room for an exit. Uh, there is one to the south uh, that looks to be where Pastor Wood and Marie are. And there's one just a few feet from you, which is where Bev and Shima and Johnny are. I'll run to the closer one. If not, I'll run towards the one with less people. Okay. Uh, so you run towards the closer one. You you like run right past Shima. You're basically caught up to Bev. You're caught up to Shima. You're right, or excuse me, you're caught up to Johnny, like right near the door that goes into that next room. So you're all kind of in that, the, the four of you are kind of in the same spot. Pastor and Marie are on the other side. Uh, it is then, uh, so the both guards are now down. Johnny is up. Um, okay. Um, I think with Shima out of harm and Bev out of harm and Patrick kind of out of harm. Well, actually, no, I, I think Shime is still technically in harm. So Johnny's going to like in the room still. You, you're yeah. I think Johnny is going to just try to like muscle past Bev 
and just try to strength pull Shima, like almost ripping her arm out of the socket with great strength, trying to just basically pull you uh, out of the room. So I'm not you're welcome. resisting. So. Okay. Uh, well, he rolled a 19, uh, which for him would be a hard success, or actually that nice. no, would be better than that, I think. Uh, he's got a 75 strength, so... Oh, gosh. Holy shit. <laughs> I, I mean, his you don't want to know what his EDU or his powers in Darth are very low. <laughs> <laughs> Those are his dumb stats. <laughs> Shana, you feel your arm just, like, your shoulder just pop all of a sudden. Because he did this without you even noticing, because you just shot at the one from a patch, and all of a sudden your other arm <laughs> gets pulled, and you feel a little pop, but you're dragged into the other room. And so now, on the north side... None of you are actually in the room with the orgy anymore. The only people that are still in the room are Pastor Wood and Marie on the southern side. And it's going to be Bev's turn. Bev, what do you want to do? Um, since I heard Pastor Wood yell for us to to bar the or block the door, yeah. once everybody's inside, that's what she'll start like doing is so if even if she like goes out and like grabs some chairs and starts shoving them towards the door for someone yeah. else to grab and use, maybe that's what she does. You did have to slide uh, like this chase lounge away to get to the door, so you can very easily just put it back in place. Oh. I don't think there's a problem with that. Yeah, I'll do that. Then. And I'm going to say there's enough of you here. I know it's not quite you know in specific order, but there's four of you here, or three of you in somewhat semblance of their right mind uh, can go ahead and um, kind of push it back into position. Um, okay, so north door is closed. Chase lounge is back into place, blocking the entrance to a degree. And that side, the only people now are Pastor Wood, Marie. And that's important to note because it is now the major mouth's turn. <laughs> As the mouth with its tongues will try um, one last time. I do I have Marie as cover, right? Because uh, she's I over mean, my, my shoulder. My legs are all like flapping around. I you, don't I'm see sure. why I wouldn't just. <laughs> it's going to throw two tongues at you guys and it's going to see one for each of you. Okay. That's uh, democratic. I'm going to say because Marie is on the back though, she can't dodge. So it's going to be rela- it's going to be reliant on Pastor Wood to dodge or fight back. Unless you want uh, to throw dodge Marie back. For sure. Okay. All right. First attack. I'll throw her if it oh. saves my life. I will. First attack. <laughs> I believe you. Uh, okay, dodge is 65. Let's go ahead and take a boost, make it 75. Okay. Hey, if that's what your conscience allows you to do. I have no conscience. <laughs> uh 42. <laughs> 42. What yeah, is that? So, uh, uh, regular, not quite hard. Okay. Still, oh, you're, you're dodging. You do manage to push out of the way. That's enough uh, since you dodged. Second attack, though, you have a penalty die for this now. Penalty die. Come on, oh roll my. me a lolly. Uh, oh that is a 67. Um, I didn't say I was taking a boost because I forgot. Uh, so I'm going to spend the two luck to make it the regular success. Regular success is still good as I rolled a 99. Uh, so, which is I'm not a spry a critical, old man. Not a critical fail for it. It's just uh, it's just a regular success. Uh, so, I'm just kidding. It's not a regular success. I'm not crazy. No. no, no. <laughs> Both of them come out and you're just moving back and forth and you're dodging here and there as you see almost like these huge thick whips. One whoosh, comes out at you. The second one comes in and it's like a snake's mouth. Just tries to snap down on you and you manage to get out of the way of both of them. Both of you are at the top of the round. Um, what do you want to do? Are we okay saying we're getting out of the room and closing the door? I'm okay with that if you guys are. Yeah. I'm over your uh, shoulder. Yep. So I move as quick go. as I can. Give her a toss, hopefully onto her feet, but that's up to her. Uh, okay. Turn around and slam the door shut. And you slam the door shut. Which one of you has lower luck? Probably me. I'm at 15. Okay. I'm at 18, so... Go ahead, go ahead and <laughs> roll a luck slightly. test, Wood. Just... All right. Get my map out really fast here. The map of the <gasps> One and eight. One and eight. I can do this. You got this, buddy. You can do it. You How can do it. How many more rounds are you preparing on, Patrick? Uh, so uh, that's a fail by 13. Three? Two. Well, yeah, this is your this is your third to last. This one right here. Okay. Uh, how'd you do? I'm sorry. I missed the, the roll result. 28 over okay. 15. Okay. So when you look around, you are very, very, very much in some kind of wine cellar. Uh, you can see old dusty bottles. You do see a door is out of here. Um, and I would say between the two of you, you can move enough to kind of push the door open. And as you look inside, 
you realize it's like this large cellar. Like there's like a handful of different rooms. Like there's more than one cellar. There's like a wine cellar. There's a main cellar. There's like a storage cellar. There's all these different like, uh, like subsections, uh, that you can see. Uh, but as you kind of push into, into this particular room, uh, within the basement, you do notice that there's some, um, food and supplies and such, but the more importantly, uh, this place is very much clogged with what looks to be construction supplies. So you can see there's all sorts of old beams and equipment here and there to the point, And I, uh, that you all have to, it's not going to be a, the two of you, it's not a clear path through. And not only that you smell smoke. And when you look up at the ceiling, you realize the ceiling is starting to sow so some sort of darkness to it. Uh, I'm assuming one of you has probably got a flashlight or something like that. So you're able to see, but it's very, very dark in here. So what, um, I'm going to need from the two of you is essentially you're going to have to roll like a, uh, a strength test or so to kind of push through. And it's just a question of whether or not you can push through faster than the fire can move down from above. And I would uh, so, also say when we get in here, um, uh, Marie would sort of turn to pastor. Um, are we blocking this door? Hell yes. We, okay. Okay. So that or would be first can... point of order is blocking okay. this door behind us. So pastor, go ahead and give me a strength test. If you want to start moving some of this and trying to find your way through, you assume there's got to be, you, you, you assume there's got to be another way out of here. Um, but you don't know for sure. <laughs> so, uh, you'll see. Could, what kind of door handles are they? Uh, weird question. Uh, I know old, like antique ones. You can tell they would need a key to lock them on the other side. Kind of like deal. knobs like skeleton key. Mm hmm. The knobs. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think I would, uh, tell Marie then, uh, start looking for a way out and I just take off my tie, uh, just ripping it off and I start tying the doorknobs together because they mm -hmm. were double doors, right? Uh, well there was one door. No, there, there wasn't a double door. like, there are two doors, oh, like okay. one door from where the orgy was happening into the wine cellar and then another door from the wine cellar into this larger cellar with food supplies and construction equipment. Okay. So there's a door uh, here. Yes. So how about you start looking for the way out and I just start barring the door. I take some of these construction materials, plank a two by four or something, try to wedge it, that kind of thing. I think that's fine. Uh, I'll say if you want to roll, if you can so roll like a mechanical strength. repair or strength, strength, I would probably want a hard success. Mechanical repair, if you want to just do that for normal. And then Marie, you can give me a spot hidden if you want to look for a way out of here. While you guys are rolling, let me describe what's going on with the other group. The other group, you have closed the door. Uh, there is a significant amount of smoke that is now starting to, to filter in. And you can, to the point where a couple of you are starting to cough here and there. Uh, and you can see the ceiling itself is beginning to char a bit. You think that maybe above you, the fire is happening. Now you are right next to a staircase going up. Uh, and you know that it goes up to the door that's underneath one of the main staircases in the foyer of the mansion. You don't see Pastor Wood. You don't see Marie. Patrick, how are you handling this? We're at a we're at a combat right now. But Patrick, how are you handling this? Yeah, upon leaving the room, the normacy sort of returns. I'd like to do a psychoanalysis to see if okay. I can come back to reality a bit. Uh, talk yourself back to it, back into it. Absolutely, yes. This is a perfect time for that. Nice. Johnny has meanwhile like is looking at Shima, looking at where she's been hit, looking at where she's been cut. Like, are you all right? Are you all right? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And he's like, kind of like, like almost like to the point where he's trying to be gentle, but his hands are just so big and he's just so strong that he's just, it's like, he's just kind of like almost petting your head just a little too hard here and there. But he's, you can tell that he means like he, he's, he's very concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Rolled yeah no, and, well, while that's happening, this is not even the first, like not even close to the first time that her heart's been dislocated. So mm -hmm. she's just like trying to put it back in the socket and while just, he's doing that. You pop it back in. Okay. So, uh, failing to convince myself, I would just put myself first in safety. So whatever dangers are around, I'll just leave, run, ignore just, whatever. You just want to run. Okay. Yeah. So while Shima and Johnny are having that moment, Patrick, you bolt and you run up the stairs. Beverly, what do you do? You're there as well. Seeing, seeing Patrick bolt um, and not really understanding why, maybe she thinks she'll think that he saw something that we didn't. Mm -hmm. So she's going to grab her books and then uh, 
yell for Johnny to carry um what's his face uh abraham bookwald, bookwald. abraham yeah the accountant yeah. yeah and then she's gonna follow after patrick okay so you grab your books johnny johnny after like kind of checking out shima shima going he'll be like oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, and he'll scoop down and he'll much like pastor would kind of fireman toss abraham bookwald who's like oh, in pain uh over his shoulder uh and then he'll look at you shima and be like you ready Grab my coat. Oh, let's go. Don't let go. And he kind of like holds, like he kind of holds his side out so you can grab his coat. And then he starts up the stairs. As the four of you with Bookvald, so five technically, come upstairs, you are completely overwhelmed with smoke. Patrick, you're the first. It is black, gray. You can feel the heat itself. When you bust out of the door, you can see that the other staircase, not the one that you're on, but the opposite staircase, the one. Uh, on what would be, I think, the eastern side of the house where the master bedroom is, is on fire. And you can see there is a chandelier that has fallen and smashed into the ground. And you can see that seems to be what has been causing. There's like this bit of fire around it. Now, there's still, it's a little bit dangerous, but there's ways to get out. You can push towards the front door and try to go through, but you can push towards the back, uh, towards the conservatory uh, area. But either way, you can see there's smoke and there's fire. Uh, as you push through. Um, so Patrick, which you're first, which way would you go? I would go the way I came in. So through the conservatory. Okay. So you head over in that direction, which means you're kind of passing by some of the flame, uh, since that's kind of on the, uh, Southeastern ish side. Uh, so go ahead and give me, um, hang on one second. Uh, as you're trying to avoid it, give me like a, like a dodge roll, I would say to try to avoid flames. That's where the over 30. truck is, no? Uh, that's where he's running, yeah. 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 The, the truck was crashed into the conservatory, which was on the other side of, of Trammell's study. Trammell's study is kind of on the same side of the house as the master bedroom that Pastor Wood set on fire. Uh, and that's okay. been slowly spreading across the mansion as I have been awesome. secretly rolling Thank stuff. You. I, I was just uh, trying to figure out what's okay. there. Patrick, you take two points as you as you're running out. You're able to get out, but you are singed along the way. Some of your clothes get caught on fire. A chunk of your hair gets caught on fire. You head out into the conservatory. You see there's a big empty space where the truck used to be. And you and you hear yelling uh, from out front like, uh, yeah, uh, you guys coming? Come, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is the whole the whole damn thing's on fire. As you can see, leaning out uh, of the driver's side of this truck, uh, which has suffered severe damage in the front. Uh, the grill is all messed up. The headlights are all messed up. Is your good pal, Polly? Uh, so, Patrick, do you run towards him or do you just like bolt into the night? <laughs> ignore his calls and just run up. You're just going to run off into the <laughs> night. Absolutely. Beautiful. And so some say he's still running today. Uh, <laughs> Bev, <laughs> Shima, which way do you two want to go? Obviously, Johnny will go whichever way you guys go. Shima, what are you thinking? I'm thinking towards the conservatory because that's where we told Pollard to start the truck. Okay. Right. Uh, both of you make dodge rolls. Uh, Beverly, please make one with a penalty die uh, as you are carrying a big sack of Santa Claus books with you. Yeah. Um, uh, which okay, you so can tell are the bag is a little bit of a, a little bit of a state. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, when I'm rolling, bonus, I would just do negative one. Negative Any one. Any support okay, I can give on that to help? Uh, no, because you're doing it yourself. Because you have to do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, you have yeah. your own thing. Right. I will take two dice, please. Hey, okay. that's what your <laughs> conscience tells 45. you to do. <laughs> Jeff, I have. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice work. laughs> oh, no. All right. That's a 94 uh, for Beverly. Shima, you pass. Johnny passes as well. Johnny rolled a 13. Uh, and then Beverly, on your way out. Uh, so you've got this, like, you I mean, like, you're moving with, you know, decent speed. But the problem is, is, like, there's just so much fire everywhere. And yeah. there's so, like, the smoke is getting in you. And you're, and once or twice, like, the, you feel the book swing over like some of the flame. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna take four points of fire damage. I'll take it. 
uh, as part of your like part of your clothes begin to singe, you get caught on fire. You see the books, the, the bag of books starts to as well. One or two fall out and tumble, and you can see they burst into flames. You kind of scoop up what you can, and you get it in a big old you know, in a big old bear hug, and you just mm-hmm. run through uh, the the trammel study itself. You can see the books at the very top. The highest level of the bookshelves have already started to catch fire as the roof itself of Trammel Study has started to give way. Right above it is presumably his bedroom, and that's where the fire started, and it's beginning to sink down through. But you all get out. You hear the same shout from Paulie. Hey, come, come on, why are you guys, why are you running? Why, what the heck? Is he kind of looking around? Obviously, I assume the three of you will go to the truck. Okay. Yeah, we want to get out. Let's cut, let's cut over to the other side. Pastor Wood, how did you do in your role? Uh, I failed. Okay. I did the strength. You said I needed a hard success. I couldn't even get a regular success. Okay. You're just trying to move some of these big blocks of, uh, like, like they're like beams, like literally like roofing beams or, or like th- uh, for, for, you know, for actually support, like cross beam support and such. Uh, and you're just struggling to do it by themselves. You've been damaged you've been cut you've been shot at you've been strangled like you've had all sorts of things and you're trying to at this point but you just can't it's it's so much slow going to try to get your the door propped up in such a way like get this against it to make it to uh to make it jammed marie how did you do i rolled a 19 under 67 so hard success you do in fact as you're looking uh you do in fact notice that kind of on the southwest corner here as you're as you're spotting around light as best you can maybe you've got a lantern maybe you've got a flashlight whatever it might be you're looking you're looking you're looking you can see there is in fact a staircase going up you would guess considering all the food supplies and such that this probably goes up into the kitchen but there is a ton of equipment in the way i need you both to roll uh, as you try to get out of here Um, i'm just gonna say give me one dodge roll uh to represent you trying to get through this uh this kind of cluttered debris as fire and ash begins to fall from the ceiling above you as you try to get over there so dodge rolls from both of you i'm taking two boosts i'm Um, I'm gonna roll it straight i'm feeling lucky now you know i just failed to roll so now i'm gonna pass one you're a good man you're a good man pastor wood i'm gonna enjoy (laughs) your next character i rolled a 46 (laughs) under 55 okay uh, I rolled okay, a so you, 34 under 65. Okay. Both of you, minimum damage on the way out. As you push through, you're having to t- together, like, like one of you gets a beam, the other gets a beam, throw it off to the side. It's a couple sacks of what looks like some kind of mortar, or, or and you're picking those sacks, but throw them off to the side, and you're climbing up over top. All the while, little flecks of, of ash and of the ceiling begin to fall, and you feel it like a sizzle against your head. You feel a sizzle on your hand. You get to the stairs, and you run up, and as you push open because it's one of the like a, it's a door directly in the floor of the kitchen as you push up and push up and push up and finally it breaks in this flood of black smoke almost like a pyroclastic cloud just whoosh, right down on the two of you both of you take one point of fire damage uh, as you're able your eyes are now watering your faces are kind of covered in soot but you're able to quickly push up into the into the kitchen you can see that the kitchen itself is not as bad uh, as you might have imagined, but there is like a small, like localized fire in the middle. You can see there's more smoke than anything, but you are right next to a door to the exterior of the house if you want to go out of it. Out, out, out. I'm on right? it. Uh, right. And I start looking for a table to throw over this hatch, uh, this trap door. Okay. Uh, there's plenty. There's plenty of like cutting boards, like those, uh, like a rolling cutting board, and different types of butler, uh, butler carts and such. Uh, I would say you absolutely can do that. I'm going to need another dodge roll from you. That's because uh, you're going to stay fair. in here a little bit longer. Is all that's going to happen, Marie. It's up to you if you want to do it as well. I told you that I was leaving. That's what I meant by I'm on it. Like I was okay. agreeing with you. So it's your all call, right. Marie. Whether you would even realize I'm doing this or not. No, I like I would probably okay. I'm just like So you just push outside. And if you push outside, you're fine. You feel <gasps> this this sudden this sudden this ex, like air of like the fresh air suddenly hits you. Like it's just <sighs> as you get out, you can feel the heat behind you. Your face and is I covered turn, and you turn and there is no pastor wood behind you, but there is just him. black smoke. Pastor, how'd you do? Please take boost uh, on this roll. 
You know, I was going to... I waited to roll so I could say to take boost, but now that you said it, I'm just going to roll it straight. Uh, okay. 45 under 65. You passed again? Okay. I passed again. You manage. You manage to man maneuver some of these, like the butler carts, this cutting board cart, all these sort of things. You just kind of start smashing, like throwing stuff over right on top of it. There is a, there's like a shelf nearby, which you can see has got a bunch of different like pantry items on it. And you just tip that over and then you rush outside. In doing so, though, take another point of fire damage as the, the smoke inhalation, the flickering uh, of flames here and there, ash coming from above, all of that gets gets to you. I'm down to three HP. Out. Take three more points just because I want you to. Okay. <laughs> as the two of you burst out the back of the building. Anybody who wants to, other than Patrick, roll... Uh, what are actually no? What you're, you all have fairly high spot hidden. Who, who here has over fifty in terms of spot hidden? Other than Patrick, Marie. Okay, anybody with fifty or over, you look and you can see. I'll say those of you out front, you can see Patrick is just running, running, running until you can no longer see him. Uh, we'll say he's running into the direction of the neighbor that you spoke to when you spoke to to Brooker, and then Patrick, you're just running through these fields, through this bush as you're just speeding along. But at a certain point, Pastor Wood and Marie, you can now see someone running. Um, what is that boy doing? That's what I Marie. did earlier. You, you see things sometimes and it's just, you just got to get away. Get in the truck. I'll get Patrick. I'll meet you on the road. And I'm already taking off towards Patrick. Okay. Marie will okay. go to the truck then. Marie, you go around the front of the you go around the front of the house. You see the truck. Uh, Shima's there. Bev's there. Johnny's there. Polly's there. And what do you guys do when you see each other? Now, Marie, when she comes around, she's covered in just soot and like she's absolutely disheveled. Uh, not just soot, but she's got all sorts of like the debris and the grime from the basement that she and Pastor Wood were pushing through. But she's nonetheless there. You don't see Pastor Wood though with her. It's just Marie. So what do you guys do when she comes up? I think I'm uh, just noticing Patrick at this point. Like, I don't think I've even realized that when he's come up. It's like, what the hell is he doing? We have to go get him. We have to go get him. Bev, Shima. Bev, Shima. What, what, what? Oh my gosh, I'm so... You're okay, you're here. Yes, we're, yes. we're okay. Let's you're okay. Where's, the fuck where's Pastor Wood? Pastor went running after Patrick. Who went running down the street? Get in, get in. Go we'll grab him uh, as we as we we gotta go. We gotta go, right? Did you, Bev? Did you get like books and things? Yeah, we did get in. The, do I hear like emergency services or anything like that? No, no. It's 1936, so it's not gonna be that quick. Okay. Cool, yeah. Cool. Um, okay. I and she marie looks back at the building which i assume we're seeing is now very much fire. on fire <laughs> the whole second floor seems to be burning in a blaze and yeah it is very much it's probably at least half if not three quarters of the way on fire at this point and you can see billows of dark black smoke just pouring out it's nighttime don't forget it's around midnight or so the, oh, so it's very we need late. To, we've we, we've concluded our, our business here yes yes i mean we didn't kill walker but Hopefully he's still in there in the fire. We, you blocked one door. We blocked the other door on the other side. We're and she's like getting course, in the back of the truck. We'll talk in the car. We'll talk in the car. Yeah, I, I presume we're yeah. getting in the car. Okay. And like yeah. Going. You all get in the car. Polly peels out and starts yeah, driving away. I'm gonna sort of insist that he follows Patrick. Uh, yeah, we're uh, looking for he can't Pastor. Really follow Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> he can go back onto the road, like he, because Patrick just like drove, like ran off into the, and in, like into like some like through through brush, through meadow, oh, through. Uh, uh, nice. Yeah, he like kind of just ran off. We'll cut though, and we'll see Patrick. You're running, and you're running, and you're running, and at a certain point, you realize that you have been running through that kind of mossy meadow that uh, the gardener Brooker uh, took you and Pastor to see. And I'll say, finally, uh, after a little bit of time, your wits come back to you and you, you like you're all alone for a moment and you can see that you are all by yourself. You look up and you can see a light on in Brooker's uh, gardener's uh, hut. You look behind you. 
you can see a massive blaze and you see like a dark shadow on the ground running at you from that that blazing building behind you. What do you do, Patrick? After my paranoia and adrenaline has run off, I can feel my wounds starting to ache. I just want to sit down, take a breather. So you just sit down, <sighs> breathing, and that's when, faster, you catch up to him. And there he is on the ground in that mossy stretch of ground where you had dug up that calcified mouth that was nowhere near as big as the one that you just fought in the wall. It was much more like those small ones that you fought in the house. What do you do? Patrick, you okay? Oh. Is that you, Pastor Wood? I'm all right. What? And I'm approaching him kind of like a scared animal at this point. I've got my arms kind of wide. I'm trying to be like calm and slow movements. The the rest are in the truck. We got a pile in the back. We're going to meet him on the road. Are, are you good to move? Be all right. A couple bolt shots. I can stand. All right. Let, let's get going then. Police will be here any minute. And I'll follow him. So you maybe help him up. And as you do, you hear a snap of like a twig. And you look up and you can see standing a handful of feet from you. The dark skin face of the Gardner Brooker. And he's got, like, at the crook of his arm, he's got a shotgun. And he looks at you, too. So, uh, you all... Looks like you got a little, uh... A little bit of business done over there. It's been a bit of an accident. You haven't seen us here. We did our best to clean it up. I hope it doesn't pro cause you any problems. No, I think we're far enough away. I don't think it's going to carry over. We'll go ahead and be leaving then. We wouldn't want to overstay our welcome. I think that's best. I think that's best. Come on. You can go this way. I follow him. He turns, looks back once more, like over his shoulder at the two of you, kind of motions forward, and he starts walking back to the property that he has been a gardener for. And he leads you on a path back, a very familiar one. Eventually, you reach the drive that the two of you parked in for a little bit. And then he stops, streets that way. I ain't got no vehicle, so uh, I can't help you in that regard, but. Get out there, head east. Or you can go ahead and head west, back to the coast. Whatever you prefer. Thank you, sir. God bless. Yes, sir. God bless you. Both of you. Just wait him and leave. He just kind of stands there and watches you guys go. Get all the way to the end of the drive. You look back for a second, maybe, and you see him. He's still in the drive. Just a shadow. One hand, a lantern. One hand, the, like the crook of his, of his arm, the gun. But then the truck pulls up. And all of you that are in the truck see, standing on the side of the road, the nearest property to Trammels, you see Pastor Wood and Patrick finally not running. Both of them looking in horrible states. But they're able to cr climb into the bed, no issues. And you guys can drive away from Trammell's mansion. So, we'll say some time passes at this point. As you're driving away, you're driving away, you pass the road where Bev had crashed the car. You can see it's still there. At a certain point, you look back. For those of you who are in the bed of the truck can see, and you start to see the black and dark smoke clouds that are just barely perceptible against the night sky. You feel a very kind of a, a slight cool breeze for those of you with a window down or on the bed 
as you drive past and drive past. At no point do you pass emergency service vehicles. Uh, but all of you look terrible. Blood, grime, dirt, moss, debris, ash, and other nameless things that are on you as well. Where do you go? Where do you go? I'm hoping maybe Polly can take us to a safe place they know that we can patch up. Okay. Yeah, patch up, uh, ask Bookwald a handful of questions, and then go to the airport, right? Like, yeah, we don't want to stay much longer. Okay. Uh, we'll say you drive over to... Um, well, maybe just where Johnny and Polly live, this pretty kind of mundane, very pedestrian looking apartment that's a couple blocks away from the water. Uh, it's much further west. It's maybe about 20 or 30 minutes north of where your hotel was. And it's an okay neighborhood, but not a great one. You can see Johnny's a little like, you know, kind of sheepish. Uh, about bringing everyone in because it is fairly small and it's not clean. Uh, it's definitely messy and he's got like this, uh, 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 sorry about that. He's kind of picking this up, picking that up while also holding his side where he got shot really bad, uh, as he took full damage on one of the shots, uh, which is why that happened. Um, no, no. And, but yeah, you guys are in their apartment. It's very small. It's basically like, one living space with like a Murphy bed and then there's like a bedroom and then the kitchen is also attached to that living space. A very small kitchen is, and there's a bathroom, single bathroom, not a whole lot. You're welcome to whatever you need. Ugh, sorry, we don't got much. I'll be the first one in the bathroom to clean my wounds. Okay. All right. Uh, the Go entire inside. way here, like once everyone is more or less safe, like Charles has been spending the entire time like worrying over Johnny to say we worried over on the stairs I'm and just I'm like right. pawing in a very it's all right. way. I've had worse. No, it's fine. It's fine. I've had worse. No problem. Ugh. Okay. So as you guys uh you're gonna patch yourselves up, you said so we'll say you take maybe I don't know hour or two or are you like staying longer than that you're just cleaning up patching up you have your clothes and your bags and such with you do you do like a change of clothes or something like that yeah we're definitely like, like yeah. our clothes are smoke filled and everything so yeah definitely. okay uh so if anybody wants to do the first aid roll we can go ahead and say you can take the first aid roll if you want to try to gain back an hp uh that's you're more than welcome to do that Otherwise, uh, we'll say an hour or more passes. Those of you yeah, who good. clean yourselves up, as you change, maybe there's some bandages and such. Some maybe actual bandages. Some maybe just you know makeshift. Uh, but at a certain I'll, point, I'll, first aid on myself. Again. Yeah, I keep failing, but I'd like to yeah. check on Johnny afterwards as well. Okay, so maybe yeah, while maybe. Shima. Yeah, maybe while Shima's in the bathroom, we'll do this one at a time. So Shima maybe goes in, cleans herself up, and while that's happening, Patrick, you get the opportunity to come over, and you see Johnny. He's like, hey, how's it going? Uh, you all right? You, you doing okay? Yeah, I'll live, but let me take a look at you. Uh, it's fine. No, it, it'll be all right. I bet it was. It's all right. I'll hear his word, but I'll still look. All right, all right. You're worse than my mother. And he kind of pulls back and you can see he took a big shot. He took eight points of damage on one shot. Uh, as you can see, there's like, like just the perfect shot right underneath. Like it probably just barely like missed a lung or something. Like it's just, it's that, that bad, like right, uh, right in his torso. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Give us uh give us that roll. Here we go on the NPC okay. Johnny and eight. Of course. So you get out, <laughs> oh, yes. get some scissors. You kind of cut through the fabric of it. Like, oh, come on, man. I just, I, you don't got that many of these nice ones. Uh. And uh, you manage to pop the bullet out. As you can see, there's a little, like there's a still big fragment of metal. You pop that out, plink it down. And uh, you kind of stitch up as best you can. You patch it. And that's probably, we'll say when Shima comes out of the bathroom, is kind of standing, you're watching as Patrick is doing a pretty good job. Like he's cleaned up the wound and you can even see, you can even see Johnny's like, 
Yeah, that's pretty good. Like a doctor or something there, Patrick? Nah, just a barber, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, 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 just a barber. I get it. And it gives you a little wink. Uh, okay. Any other things people are doing here before you head to the airport? Uh, I'm going to do a first aid roll on Johnny as, as well. Um, I had rolled a 15. 15? Okay. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, I think it's fine. I, in this case, uh, as you kind of come down, you, you, maybe you check one of the other rooms. He's got more than one. You kind of stitch up this, stitch up that. He's got shot like three times. So uh, you're just constantly like going through, stitching this up, bandaging that up. Some are just grazes. Some are, are bigger. Some you have to like pop the... Uh, and he's like, yeah, it's all right. I mean, Kony, we get some... Uh, we get guys on the... On the payroll, that'll help us up. We get some doctors. We'll get it looked at. No one infection and nothing. So it'll be, it'll be all right. You know, like scars. You know, chick stick scars, right? <laughs> Glory <Okay>. lasts forever. <laughs> Glory lasts forever, you know? Pain heals. God damn it, I love that line. Okay. So, so Marie's first aid is on Pastor Wood. Okay. Um, How'd you do? I rolled a five. Um, so it was a five under 30. So it was an extreme success. So I also rolled a uh, first aid on myself and I took two boosts to do it and I failed. Okay. So likely you saw that I was like messing around with something. I probably just wanted to save my shirt as much as possible. Uh, How many and you come times over and have I told you that that disgusting, dirty sock is not appropriate? To plug a bullet hole. <laughs> well, I lost my handkerchief somewhere in the fire. I, I the didn't handkerchief have was else. not appropriate either. <laughs> that handkerchief <laughs> has seen every ooey gooey substance that we've run across since we've been in Los Angeles. <laughs> and you sure haven't every washed it one yet. Of us has bled on that handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been patching so, up my wounds for quite some time. All right. I, I know what I'm doing. And I don't know what I'm doing. I don't believe you. I genuinely do not believe you. And she's taking, because she was wearing this sort of like green kind of jumper thing that's kind of like wide sort of like culotte kind of um, pants. And so clearly she do, isn't going to wear that ever again, which it was Beverly's, by the way. So Beverly might be a little upset as she's like ripping this for threads. That's not. We were faster. planning on throwing all this clothes away anyways. <laughs> so um so she helps uh patch up pastor um but that's a very good role okay. all right so we'll say people have been patched up you asked uh, you try to ask bookwald a few questions i think someone said they wanted to do that yeah he yeah. is not in grace like he he is in i mean as or as bad as you guys are he is in way worse shape so i would say anybody with decent medicine or first aid you can tell like broken bones you know the like mm. whatever they called a concussion back then you know his bell was rung his face is swollen he's got multiple fac uh, fractures on his face uh so he looks like he's in terrible state but like like so he basically can answer like maybe yeses or no questions but his eyes barely even open uh someone they worked him over big time big time i think in that case then i i would just go up to Johnny. Well, hey, we said you could have Bookwald. He's all yours. I know he's not talking right now. You do us a favor. If you hear anything about where the money's come from, where the money's going, our case doesn't end here in L.A. And uh, perhaps we could do your boss a favor and track down wherever that location might be. All right, yeah, yeah. Paul, he said he guys found a few books and accounting logs and such. Like, we'll, uh, we'll go through that, you know, see if, uh, Mr. Book Vault can help us understand it, you know. And, uh, I'm sure Mr. Raccone, as he's saying this, like, more for Abraham, Mr. Raccone is always looking for someone who knows, uh, knows how to handle money. So, uh. We'll figure out a way to make Mr. Mr. Bookvold here feel right at home. Don't worry. Don't worry about it at all. Can you, we find can you guys check in on his family? 
and make sure that Walker didn't do anything to his family? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I guess. We, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, little uh, little favor for him. Make him more uh, inclined to uh, to join our family. We protect his. Yeah, no problem, Doc. You did save his life, and I hope. And I turn towards Bookwald. Hope he remembers that you did him that kindness. And you can see, like, there's like a little bit of a head shake. And he, and he just like, uh, like with a grimace, you can tell some of his teeth have been broken. He's like, I remember. And a little bit of a spittle comes out of his mouth. And again, he is, he's, he's literally got months and months of like recovery. That's how bad he is. Um, you would probably guess, Pastor, but like he used to be relatively inner circle. And then he left. And then he gave up a bunch of info to Bev and Patrick. And then his name got leaked. Uh, to Pisner, more than likely that got back to Walker, and they yeah. probably worked him down a little bit too. So it's just sort of, yeah. But you, Did yeah, he 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 might he's not gonna look the same, and he might never walk straight again. Like you could tell his legs been awful. broken. Yeah, he's he's yeah. in really really rough shape, but he's he's alive though at least. Uh, did was it Walker who who did this to you? You can and you just see his like head kind of that. Yeah. As he manages to get that out. I hope you well, I hope you have a lifetime of prosperity ahead of you and you remember your friends. And Johnny here will take good care of you and make sure that you are protected from here on out. And the way I say that, essentially, I'm trying to intimate to Bookwald that he's going to be Johnny's now. Yeah. Johnny gets it. Sure, sure. We're going to be fast friends, me and me and old Abraham. Me. He just kind of very gently pats him on the shoulder. And even that, like, you can see Abraham kind of shifts and moves a bit. Um, uh, I would really like to, if we, since we have the uh, lockbox in uh, around, uh, I'd like to show the some of the pictures to book all me, like, can you point out Walker or Jamal in any of these pictures? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You absolutely oh, could do that. She just starts pointing at someone. Is this Walker? No. So <laughs> you uh, and none of the pictures do you see? Because oh, like if you point out, it will say this takes like a good 20, 30 minutes. You should point out every individual face that you can. At no point does he identify Captain Walker. He does, however, identify Ramon Echeverria, who's in basically every single photo. And... He identifies Samson Trammell, who was in fact the man laying down that you talked to, Beverly, and the man that you saw, Patrick, on the balcony. That is, that was Samson Trammell. So Trammell's been taken care of and Walker hasn't, is well, what we know for sure. Mm -hmm. like, my, from my what you know, I, I think from what you know, like Walker, you're not even sure timeline wise whether Walker and Echeverria were even if they overlapped even because like Trammell eventually took over after from what you can understand after Echeverria died uh, during the incident with, uh, with Walter Winston. Right. So you're not even sure that he would even have been there. Uh, so, and from everything you've heard, he's kind of like a, he's like, he's got that kind of Kaiser Sose vibe. He's like that kind of, kind of crime guy uh, where he's just kind of, right. you know, it's hard to, no one really can point him out. It, you know, right. it's that is that kind of thing. And it's possible one of the guards you killed was him, but maybe not. Were any of the guards the guy who was there when um, Patrick and Pastor went up to the front door? I'll tell you that both Pastor, Pastor Wood and Patrick did not see the guy who answered the door when they first arrived. Okay. Never saw him. Thinking that's Walker. Yeah, I'm thinking you guys walked up to him and were like, hey, we want to talk to a walker. And he was like, not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, while Shyman's doing that whole thing, Bev's going to go through and she's going to separate out the like accounting papers that we're going to give to them. Sure, and, that's um, no problem. You can do yeah, that. but that's what she'll be doing like off on the side. Yeah, I think I think Paul here actually already took some stuff. He just like, I'm taking this because it's that was the uh. deal. Yeah, so... 
But anything uh, if, that has kind of like an occult I'm, vibe to it, sorry. like I'll say Bev, you can throw that in your like the the all the books that you grab, uh, that what weird about that nasty folio thing. Yeah. yeah, I'll say that one. It like when they when you look at it, it's it's not it doesn't look like it's tracking sales. It looks like it's mm-hmm. sand, like just a quick look at it. It's it's hideous to look at and nasty. I think the two of you have already rolled your sand just from looking at it because it has that kind of vibe to it, but. Just a quick look at it. It doesn't look like it's the workings of a of an accounting mastermind. It looks more like the testament of like some sort of religious icon who just has okay. things they want to say. Uh, it would, um, and in fact, it is an item, and it will take time to read. Yeah. De- okay. Definitely. With the accounting. None of this is like in code or anything, is it? Like the other book that we had. Yeah, you're definitely seeing a lot of the same uh, concepts, but it is different. You would be able to, at this point, conclude that Abraham Buchwald was the one who who kind of maintained the books back in 24. Yeah. So he's the one who was able to do all the coding. And all that really seems to have done was illustrating, like, who locally is it being distributed to? Like, who are who are buying? Who, you know, who's going here? Which, which groups are going to which, you know? And so that's what you have in 1924. So... In terms of the other stuff that you just got, I'll say once you start looking at it, Paulie would be like, hey, 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 hang on, hang on. Listen, we had a deal. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I'm just, you don't need to sure see it's this. not in code. And this is mine. And that's yours. You got plenty of stuff. I cut the freaking, uh, you know, I got, I almost got burnt by a freaking fire getting those things out for you. You can take those and I'm going to take these. And that's it. We had a deal. That is still the deal. I was just making sure it wasn't in code for you. Oh, you think I can't figure out a code? You think Mr. Ricone can't figure out a code? You think you're smarter than Mr. Ricone? I'm sorry. Do uh, you have a, a giant no. uh, drug cartel in various other industries that you can uh, diversify your portfolio with? No, I don't think Marie so. Maria's going to walk over at this point. Excuse me. Excuse me. What? That item that you have in your hand, you would not have even known about. If it weren't for us. If my friend yeah. Dr. Key would like to spend an extra two minutes looking at it, I would recommend that you give her those two minutes. He steps up to you, looks up. Yeah, you called us and you needed our help. We brought you weapons and we brought you back up and re risked our lives for you. And my best friend over there has got three bullets in him. So maybe take a little of the attitude out of your tone. You got what you want, we got what I want, and what Mr. Ricone wants. There's no reason we can't still be friends here. Capiche? We are still friends here. We are still friends here. And and Bev just kind of like shakes her head and she can just kind of like pats Marie's shoulder. You know what, Polly? Thank you. And she just hands it back to him. And oh, then, he didn't even have it. He didn't even let oh, you touch yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, then, no and way. then she just kind of like whispers to Marie, you know, I thought about sleeping with him. And then she just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and Marie just sort of like, like she wasn't angry with Polly, but she's definitely going to like have Dr. Keys back. And so she just, she just kind of like looks at him like it's impassioned. Like there isn't any kind yeah. of like yeah. anger there. Mm-hmm. And so like, as she tends to do, she just kind of just looks at him and just kind of like gives him a little wink and, Turns back around. Okay. All right. So, some time will pass. Catch your breath. Patch up. Get your items together. Do you go to the airport next, or do you have any other business that you were looking to attend to? Uh, there is something very specifically that I would like to have to do. <laughs> okay. I think this is uh, carrying over that, like, more instinctive uh, behavior uh, mm-hmm. where she um, after ever, after there's some amount of patching up that has happened and everyone is more or less in a decent state like for probably the first time in her entire life she kind of doesn't care who sees her doing this and she takes Johnny by the hand sort of wordlessly outside the house and returns several minutes later with the <laughs> red faced and slightly rumpled. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
he comes back into his hair is all like disheveled and stuff. Some of the bandages are a little bit off, like from where they were. And at that point, we'll say that you all leave the apartment, bid your farewells. Uh, Polly comes over to Pastor Wood and Patrick Price. Hey, you guys take care. Be careful. You be careful. That's me and you, Polly. Thanks for, thanks for your help, Polly. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You get it. Yeah, you be yeah. careful. You watch your backs, all right? Give our apologies to your uncle as well. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. We got stuff in here. And he kind of like holds up on an accounting book. I'm going to be able to buy him a fleet of trucks. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> and like the way he laughs, there's like this hint of memory, Pastor Wood, to Jack Pisner's laugh as he does so. I already don't like it because it's like stolen goods and everything. So I just kind of like cringe a little bit, but Polly was on our side. So I, I, I'm not going to say anything. So you guys get in the car, you say goodbyes and, uh, you drive on out to the, uh, uh, or maybe, maybe Johnny drives you, whatever it might be, but we head on out to the airport. We see you come up to the, uh, to the plane, the familiar plane you find, you get in contact with Frank Kearns. It's still dark, but it's getting closer and closer to dawn. Frank takes one look at you guys and he's just like, lets out a whistle. He's just like, Whew. and he starts taking your bags and he starts loading it up. One by one, you get onto the plane, sit in your various spots. We watch as the plane takes off right as the sun comes up for Los Angeles and you guys start flying away. We'll go ahead and we'll end there with you guys having completed act one of eternal lies. Look at that, guys. Look at you guys. You did it. Yeah. Told you to do it forever. Nice. Oh, oh my God. Right. <laughs> wow. Mostly live. Mostly, Mostly what live. Mostly live. Mostly Excellent live. conclusion to LA. That was fantastic. Oh, good. That was Wow. Sick. All right. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Goodness. And everyone's alive ish. Uh, so that's good. I got three hit points. I'll live forever. Holy crap. Even Bible the fire. Beer. The fire. The fire could have kid you. How much do you have? How much do you have? Patrick? Five. Definitely grind. Oh my Seven. God. Oh dear. Eight. What? Eight. Okay. I walked Giant. into the the charge with seven hit points. So I I really did get yeah. lucky with my defense there. Holy crap! Yeah, Johnny, Johnny are you down in single digits too? To I'm eight of twenty four. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. Johnny was down to four as well. Yeah, it was rough for him too. He's getting close. Oh, he geez. took eight. He took eight points on one shot. Like he took a full Fuck, eight on one man. gunshot. That was pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, sweet. So that is the end of LA for now, at least. Uh, who knows whether we return to say hi to Johnny and Polly again in the Okone family. But for now, uh, we'll say you're on the plane. We'll figure out exactly where you're going. I would assume maybe uh, back to, to Arkham, get some time off, might do some downtime, figure out what your next steps might be. You've got some stuff to go through. You got Trammell's uh, documents to go through. You've got these books to look at. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we get to do. We'll probably, uh, I would imagine we're probably going to have a time jump of some kind, at least a couple weeks maybe or so before we move on to the next. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of see how that goes from there. Uh, and I would also say, and I can give it to you now, you guys can go ahead and take 2D6 uh, worth of sand back. There's the opportunity for more, but 2D, I'm not going to say how, but 2D6, uh, and you can add oh, that yes. back to your sanity. You can also reset your daily sand. Uh, both Patrick and Marie, you were going to, we're going to sort of figure out since you guys had some, uh, some bouts of madness, we'll figure out how that's going to affect the two of you moving forward. Uh, and then Patrick, you also have indefinite insanity. Uh, and so we'll sort that out, uh, between now and next session. Uh, but it looks like, wow, everyone got like nine or eight, except for Pastor Wood, who got six. I got six. Sense. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> that Aww. tracks. All right. I'm so glad uh, Long rolled well, because Long was yeah, really I got a nice chunk back. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So he needs bad. it. So that's much good. tonight. Depending on what we do uh, for the the time between uh, scenario, between acts or scenarios, like you, there's the opportunity to get more back. This is just for basically completing LA like like the chapter and then completing the act so this is act one bonus and scenario bonus um and then there's other little things here and then you could potentially get as well uh but let's figure that out off air let's go ahead and do some closing plugs 
so we can get on out of here and enjoy the rest of our weekends. Uh, we are going to start where do we want to start. Let's start with my tray. My tray. Tell us where we can find you on the Internet. First of all, thank you for this game. This is just so good. And this is an amazing first act. I, I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, I am Mighty Play Games on YouTube, where I make system agnostic, multi system tabletop content, um, which you should check out if you want to check out. Fantastic. Link is in the description, link is in the chat. Go check it out. Then, uh, Steven. What are you up to these days, buddy? So my tray starts her shout out with a compliment to Jeff because she's a good person. Uh, I'm going to start my shout out with the shout out. Uh, I'm working on my own RPG. Uh, it's a Weird West game. It's called Huckleberry RPG. Uh, the link is in the chat, huckleberryrpg.com. If you sign up for the mailing list, you get the early access for free. Uh, it comes out on August 1st. Uh, after that, uh, there will be a price for it figured out exactly what price it will be uh but if you want it free all you got to do is sign up for the mailing list uh all, all the early supporters will will get uh digital access to the pdf there uh and if you would like to play it you can join the lolly gagger discord i've got my own play testing channel on there you join the discord uh you click on the little cowboy hat when you uh, accept the rules it gives you the play tester role and i've got events uh that i do about one a week maybe sometimes two a week uh and it's first come first serve uh, so if, if there's a seat open, uh, you can play Huckleberry uh, and I'll run you through the weird West. Fantastic, man. Uh, and then for the rest of us or for all of us here, really, because we all play in these games. Uh, what do we got next? Next game is Monday. You can see some fragged empire, myself, Melissa, my tray. We are going through some space, uh, futuristic space shenanigans. A lot of fun. Uh, Tuesday, we would normally have a game, but Steven doesn't want to see us. Uh, however, Next Tuesday, what are we playing? Frontier Scum. Frontier Scum. We're playing Frontier we're Scum. We're playing Frontier Scum. Uh, oh, that, that's what we're you. playing. Frontier <laughs> Scum. Uh, okay. it, we're going we're gonna to be in a different Weird West game. Uh, it, it's a little bit more grounded than my game is. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. We're all going to play Outlaws, uh, and uh, we're going to create our own gang of bank robbers and uh, highwaymen. Uh, in uh, play, uh, we'll just. I had a brain fart there. Uh, we're gonna Ooh. play in the Western genre. I don't know what I'm saying anymore, Jeff. Hit the hit the big red button. <laughs> Monday, Fragged Empire. Tuesday, we're off. But the following Tuesday, we're playing Frontier Scum, which is a wonderful Western uh, Western game. After that, Thursday next week, we got some Simber Room. Uh, Melissa, myself, and uh, our good friends Aaron and Kipser and Jeremy are in that game. Next Friday, this crew that you see is uh, we're gonna we're gonna move forward about eighty years as we got our Delta Green game next Friday, and uh, and yeah, that's what we got. Uh, and so, like I said, come hang out in the Discord, come talk to us, uh, see what we're doing, see what tell us what you're doing, uh, talk about awesome games and random things. We are going to go ahead and we are going to raid C plus content because it looks like they are also playing some Call of Cthulhu. Uh, so let's just keep that Call of Cthulhu train going. Thank you earlier. Uh, I was busy at the time, but thank you to Tales of Myth and Mayhem for the raid. Uh, make sure and that you follow them. And, and singularity role play for the second. And singularity role play. Thank you for keeping track of everything. Sometimes I just get so in to trying to wrap giant tongues around my players that I don't notice what happens in chat. <laughs> And on that note, I blame you, frankly. Right? It's very, it's a very easy thing to get distracted by. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see y'all later. Bye bye. I'll be seeing you.